1. Basic Agriculture. Learning Objectives. After reading this chapter, students will be able to understand about major food grain crops including cereals, oil seeds and pulses as well as fodder and commercial crops. Gain a science-based overview of agriculture and food systems. Enrich themselves about production technology of major food crops of India. Disseminate the knowledge about agricultural production and management at household and village level. Contribute in agricultural production at household and community level. Introduction. Agricultural production and management emphasizes the application of the principles of science and management to agricultural production operations. Agricultural production and management involves the combination of land, water, labor, and other inputs such as seeds, nutrients, pesticide, and machinery in the production of food and fiber crops. Agricultural production and management deals with how the farmers combine land, water, farm inputs, labor, and their management skills into practices to produce agricultural crops. During post-green revolution era, India has become self-sufficient in food grain production when considerable advances in crop improvement and crop production were made by the agricultural scientists. In the nutshell, agricultural production and management has a vital role in food production, farm income enhancement, food security, nutritional security, poverty alleviation, rural employment and sustainable agriculture in the developing world. Crop production practices. Crop production practices are of utmost importance for successful and economic cultivation of field crops and national food security at large. Current agriculture daily needs scientific and rational crop production practices to enhance farm productivity with long-term sustainability. Crop production practices can be divided into various categories that farmers make to produce food, fodder and fiber, etc. The major ones are Soil and crop management. It deals with deciding what crops and varieties to grow and in what sequence to utilize the soil's productive capacity, and what tillage, cultivation, and soil conservation measures to undertake to physically till and preserve the soil and conserve moisture in a particular agroecology. Chapter 1. Agricultural Production and Management. 2. Nutrient Management. It deals with determining the additional nutrients the soil needs for crop growth, and applying agricultural resources, animal manure, compost, or commercial fertilizer in appropriate forms, amounts, and ways that foster crop yields and farm profitability, while reducing nutrient loss to the environment. Water management. It deals with determining the water needed for crop growth and applying that water efficiently, considering water availability, drainage, and off-site water quantity, quality impacts. Weed management. It deals with determining the weed threats to crop growth, yield, and quality in the management practices to control them in field crops. Pest management. It deals with determining insect pest and disease threats to crop growth, yield, and quality in the preventive or remedial measures to control them besides keeping the food and environmental safety. Crop production seasons. Primarily, there are three crop production seasons in India viz. Kharif, Rabi and Z. Kharif season crops. The Kharif crop is the summer crop or monsoon crop in India. Kharif crops are usually sown with the beginning of the first rains in June-July, during the southwest monsoon season. Major Kharif crops of India include, rice, maize, sorghum, moon bean, groundnut, cotton, soybean, etc. Rabi season crops. The Rabi crop is the winter season crop in India. It is sown in October, November and harvested in March, April every year. Major Rabi crops in India include, wheat, barley, oats, mustard, peas, etc. Z season crops. This crop is grown in some parts of the country during March to June. Major Z crops in India include, French bean, muskmelon, watermelon, bitter gourd, pumpkin, ridge gourd, etc. Classification of agricultural crops. The broader classification of the agricultural crops on the basis of their economical use is described as under. Cereal crops, rice, wheat, maize, sorghum. Pulse crops, pigeon pea, herd bean, moon bean, kidney bean, cow pea, chickpea, lentil, pea, etc. Oil seed crops, soybean, rapeseed and mustard, groundnut, sunflower, sesame, safflower, etc. Fodder crops, bursim, red clover, lucerne, etc. 3. Basic agriculture. Fiber crops, cotton, jute, maista, etc. Commercial crops, sugarcane, tea, coffee, etc. Production and management of cereal crops. Cereals crops are members of the grass family and refer to crops which are harvested for dry grains only for example, rice, wheat, maize and sorghum. Among these cereals, rice, wheat, maize are the major cereal crops of India. Cereals are high in carbohydrates and protein along with traces of minerals and vitamins. The agricultural production and management of three major cereal crops viz. rice, maize and wheat is described as under. Rice. Rice, or sativa, is the staple food for more than 3 billion people in the world. Globally, rice is grown in more than 100 countries, with an area of 154 million hectares and production around 600 million tons and productivity is 3.9. Tons per hectare. Among the rice-growing countries, Fig. 1. India has the largest area under rice in the world. In respect of production, however, India takes second position with 131.2 million tons of coarse rice. In India, rice is cultivated on 44.6 million ha area with a production of 132 tons and average productivity of 2.97 tons per hectare. It is grown in almost all the states in India, with Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal and Punjab being leading states in area, production and productivity, respectively, Fig. 2. Punjab has the highest productivity of rice among all the states. Around 90% of the rice in the world is grown in Asia. Rice provides about 29.4% of total calories, capita per day in Asian countries. Milk rice contains usually 6 to 7% protein. The fat content in rice is low, 2.0 minus 2.5%, and much of fat is lost during milling. Fig. 1. Global rice growing areas. Fig. 2. Major rice growing states of India. Climatic and soil requirements rice cultivation extends from sea level to as high as 3,000 meters above mean sea level, AMSL, in India. High temperature, high humidity and high rainfall have considerable effect on growth and development of rice plant. Rice crop is grown during Kharif season in. 4. Northwestern plains zone, but in south and northeastern parts of the country, it is grown in all the three seasons, as these areas do not have very cold weather during winter. Rice crop needs a hot and humid climate. It is essentially AC. Tree plant. The wide range of agroclimatic conditions suggests an equally wide variety of soils. As regards texture, rice is grown on loamy sands in Punjab to heavy clay loams or clays in Andhra Pradesh and some other states. Soils having good water holding capacity with good amount of clay and organic matter are ideal for puddled rice. Rice ecosystems in India Rice farming is practiced in several agroecological zones in India. No other country in the world has such diversity in rice ecosystems than India. Rice cultivation in India is done in four distinct types of ecosystems. Irrigated rice ecosystem. Rain-fed upland rice ecosystem. Rain-fed lowland rice ecosystem. Blood-prone rice ecosystem. A view of rice-based cropping systems in India. Rice cropping pattern in India vary widely from region to region and to a lesser extent from one year to another year depending on a wide range of soil and climatic conditions. Some of the rice-based cropping patterns being followed in the country are Rice wheat, rice wheat mung bean, rice toria wheat, rice toria chickpea, rice wheat barley, potato, rice potato black rim, rice pea green rim and rice rice rice. 
Recommended varieties a good number of rice varieties, hybrids having resistance to various biotic and abiotic stresses and grain quality have been developed in India. Table 1. Some of the improved cultivars of rice are described as under. 5. Basic agriculture. Table 1. Important rice cultivars recommended for different states. Cultivar type. Rice cultivars. Hybrids. F1, DRRH3, PA6201, Pusa RH10, HRI120, Sahyadri2, UPRH27, Rajalakshmi, 1 Sankadhan1, 1, 1 Sugandhan17, PHB71. Basmati, scented varieties Basmati 370, Pusa Basmati 1, Tarauri Basmati, Karnal Local, Pusa Sugan 3, Pusa Sugan 4, Pusa Sugan 6, PRH 10, 1 Dhan 15, Punjab Basmati 1, Pusa Basmati 11 21, Pusa Basmati 6, Pusa Basmati 15 09. Other improved varieties Mahamaya, GK5003, Pusa 33, Pusa 169, Masuri, JKRH401, Gurjari, GR6, Dandi, HKR127, Brigudhan, Himalaya 2216, Scout 23, SKAU27, GK5003, Gori, Sveta, Ratnagiri 24, Rajeshwari, PR108, PR109, PMK2, 1Than10, 1Than11, BLThan221, IR20, Jayanti. Methods of cultivation rice is generally grown under dry or wet cultivation methods, which are briefly described below. A. Dry cultivation 1. Direct seeded rice rice is sown directly in dry soil, dry seeding, or wet soil, wet seeding, and irrigation is given to keep the soil sufficiently moist for good plant growth, but the soil is never flooded. Dry system of rice cultivation is followed in our plants. Sowing of rice is usually done in mid-June in the case of the crop dependent on southwest monsoon and in September for the crop dependent on northeast monsoon. Three methods are commonly followed in sowing dry and semi-dry crop. These are broadcasting, drilling or sowing in furrows behind country plough, and dibbling in general. A seed rate of 30 to 50 kg h1 is required for drilling, by 60 to 100 kg h1 is required for broadcasting. A row spacing of 15 minus 20 cm is optimum for upland rice. There are mainly two methods of direct seeding. Dry seeding. In dry seeding, seed is directly sown in dry soil either by seed drill or broadcasting of unsprouted seed in well-prepared and level dry soil. Wet seeding. In wet seeding, seed is directly sown in puddled soil either by drum seeder or broadcasting of sprouted seed in wet soil. 2. Arabic rice. It is a high-yielding rice, grown in non-puddled, arabic soils under irrigation and high external inputs. Irrigation is applied when the soil becomes dry, and the quantity of 6. Applied water is sufficient to bring the soil to field capacity. The realization of water savings combined with high yields depends on good water management. Dry seeding of rice can be done by drilling the seed into a fine seedbed at a depth of 2 to 3 cm. Weed management is a critical factor in Arabic rice. Timely application of herbicides and two or three hand weeding may provide effective control. Seeding under dry situations is done in three different ways with drilling, dibbling, and broadcasting. B. Wet cultivation conventional rice cultivation. The conventional rice cultivation is a wet system of cultivation and rice is grown under wet season right from the start. In this system, the field is brought to a soil puddle by repeated plowing with 5 to 7 cm standing water. After getting the requisite puddle, rice seedlings are transplanted as sprouted seeds are direct seeded. The seedlings of rice are grown in nursery before transplanting. Transplanting operation. Time of planting is the most important factor influencing the yield of the crop. In general, timely transplanting of 20 to 25 days old seedlings in wet season is ideal. In general, 20 cm times 10 cm, 20 cm times 15 cm or 15 cm times 15 cm spacing is ideal in transplanted rice. For realizing the yield potential of high yielding varieties of rice, 2 to 3 seedlings per hill is generally recommended. In rice hybrids where the tilling is more profuse, 1 to 2 seedlings per hill is sufficient. Depth of transplanting rice seedlings is 2 minus 4 cm. System of rice intensification, Shri, Shri is an unusual innovation that can raise productivity of land, labor, water, and capital invested in irrigated and rainfed rice production. Shri has evoked considerable interest among agronomists over last decade and posed interesting research issues. Shri may prove as a boon to enhance productivity by using less seed and irrigation water than conventional rice farming. The Shri essentially comprises the following methodological components. Shallow, 1-2 cm transplanting of young seedlings at the two-leaf stage into a moist seedbed. Transplanting of single rice seedling at 25 cm times 25 cm spacing. A minimum of three hand weedings at 10 to 12, 22 to 25 and 40 to 42 days after transplanting. Farmers may use mechanical weeding tool called weeder to remove weeds and aerate soil surface. Alternation of wetting and drying of the field for soil aeration during vegetative growth. 7. Basic agriculture. Addition of organic manures to supply adequate nutrients and to improve soil structure. If necessary, chemical fertilizer may be used as a supplement. A viewer field showing system of rice intensification, SRI. Nutrient management adequate supply of all the essential plant nutrients is a must for getting good yield of rice. A dose 100 to 150 kg N per hectare is generally recommended for high-yielding varieties of rice. A dose of 45 to 60 kg P. 2O. 5 per hectare and 40 kg K. 2O. Ha is generally recommended for rice. Zinc deficiency in rice growing areas of India is widespread. Zinc sulfate at 20 to 25 kg Ha is generally recommended in zinc deficient soils. Water management rice is the largest consumer of water. About 3,000, 5,000 liters water is required to produce 1 kg rice. The principal water loss processes from paddy fields are by runoff, percolation, seepage and evapotranspiration or consumptive water use. The submergence, 2 to 5 cm, throughout the crop growth period is conducive to high yields. Under water scarcity, the practice of intermittent submergence during the critical stages, tilling, flowering, and maintenance of saturation or field capacity in rest of the growth stages is recommended. Weed management hand weeding is most widely used method for controlling weeds in rice. Normally two weedings are done. Time of weeding slightly varies in different regions but weedings are generally done within 15 to 45 days after sowing. Weeding with some implements such as hand holes, weeders and bullock drawn desi plow can be done to control weeds in rice. Use of herbicides is gradually increasing in rice culture. Herbicides are expensive to small farmers but not to the large farmers who face the problem of labor shortage. Table 2. 8. Table 2. Chemical weed management in rice. Rice. Herbicides. Dose, kilogram A, I, per hectare, application time and remarks. Rice nursery butach law. 1.0-1.5. Pre-emergence at 5 to 6 days after sowing, thus, if moisture is less in soil. Irrigation should be done immediately. Pendamethalin 1.0-1.5. Pre-emergence at 5, 6, thus, if moisture is less in soil, irrigation should be done immediately. Retilach law, S, 0.3-0.4. Pre-emergence at 3, 5, thus. Direct seeded upland rice butach law. 1.0-1.5. 
to be applied before emergence of crop. One hand bleeding at 3035 das will supplement herbicide treatment. Pendamethalin 1.0-1.5 to be applied before emergence of crop. One hand bleeding at 3035 das will supplement herbicide treatment. Pretilach law S0.3-0.4 pre-emergence at 35 das. Metzelfurin metal 0.010 minus 0.015 post emergence at 3035 das. Basically a broadleaf weed killer and recommended as a substitute of 2,4-D. Direct seeded puddle and transplanted rice. Putach law 1.0-1.5 Pre-emergence at 3 to 5 days after transplanting, that, on saturated soil, no irrigation or standing water impounded for at least 3 days after treatement. Pendamethalin 1.0-1.5. Pre-emergence at 3, 5, that, on saturated soil, no irrigation or standing water impounded for at least 3 days after treatment. Pretilach law S0.3-0.4. Pre-emergence at 3, 5, that. Metzelfurin metal 0.010 minus 0.015 post-emergence at 3035 das. Basically a broad leaf weed killer and recommended as a substitute of 2,4-D. Disease management to overcome the diseases, the seed should be disease-free. For fungal and bacterial diseases, seed should be treated with babistin at 2 grams kg 1 seed. Fungicides can be sprayed to control the diseases. Table 3. 9. Basic Agriculture. Table 3. Symptoms and Management of Important Diseases of Rice in India. Disease and its Causal Organism. Symptoms. Management. Leaf and neck blast initial symptoms on the leaves are white to grayish green circular lesions, spots with dark green borders, which may enlarge and coalesce to kill the entire leaves. Lesions on the neck cause the girdling of the neck and the panicle to fall over. Early sowing of seeds and balanced use of fertilizer. Planting resistant varieties against the rice blast is the most practical and economical way. Systemic fungicides are effective against the disease. Bacterial leaf blight. Water soaked to yellowish stripes on leaf blades or starting at leaf tips. Severely infected leaves tend to dry quickly. Field sanitation such as removing bead hosts, rice straws, ratoons, and volunteer seedlings. Use of resistant varieties. Seed treatment with bleaching powder, 100 micrograms per milliliter, and zinc sulfate, 2%, reduce bacterial blight. Pest management Most of the rice pests are distributed throughout India, however, only a few pests are economically important in different regions. Agronomic practices and use of resistant cultivars should be given preference for pest management. The use of selective pesticides should also be stressed for efficient pest management. Table 4. Table 4. Important insect pest, nature of damage and pest management in rice. Insect pest. Nature of damage. Management stem border, yellow, symptoms of stem border damage are deadhearts and whiteheads. Whiteheads are discolored panicles with empty or partially filled grains. Larvae feed on the tissues around the node. Adopt seedling root deep treatment in 0.05% chlorpyrifos emulsion for 1 minute before transplanting in endemic areas. Apply carbofurin 3G at 20 kg HA1. Or for 8 10G at 12.5 kg H1 or phenethrin 50 EC at 0.1%. 10. Leaf folder. Caterpillars fold the rice leaf around them and attach the leaf margins together with silk strands. Folded leaves restrict photosynthesis. Use cultural practices like crop rotations, reduce planting density and balance nutrition. Harvesting, threshing and yield the plant should be cut close to the ground at ripening and left for drying. Threshing can be accomplished by manual methods, pedal threshers or power-driven stationary threshers. Combined machines can be employed for combined harvesting and threshing. The produce should be properly sun-dried. The optimum moisture content for storage of rice grains is 12%. A well-managed crop of mid-late duration, 135 to 150 days, varieties and hybrids yield about 6 to 7 T per hectare, whereas short duration cultivars yield about 4.5 minus 5.5 T per hectare. Wheat. Wheat triticum eastivum is the main rabi cereal crop in India. The total area under the crop is about 29.8 million ha in the country. The production of wheat in the country has increased to an all-time record high of 94.88 million MT in 2011-12. The productivity of wheat is 3,140 kg per hectare in 2011-12. Climatic and soil requirements wheat is grown over a wide range of latitudes ranging between 60 on and 60 OS and altitudes ranging from sea level to 3,500 meters AMSL in the tropics and subtropics. Normally, the most ideal conditions for wheat cultivation are cool and moist weather during the vegetative growth period and warm and dry weather during rain formation. The optimum temperature for the germination of wheat is between 20 to 22 oak, though wheat grain can also germinate at 4 degrees Celsius. The optimum temperature for vegetative growth ranges from 16 to 22 degrees Celsius. During the grain development, wheat requires a mean maximum temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius for at least 4 to 5 weeks. Wheat grows well in those areas where annual rainfall ranges between 250 and 1,800 mm. Wheat crop also cannot withstand extended periods of soil moisture stress. Rain-fed wheat requires a minimum evenly distributed winter rainfall of 15 to 20 cm. Wheat is grown on a wide variety of soils. Major cultivated species of wheat. Common wheat or bread wheat, T. eastivum, a hexaploid species that is the most widely cultivated in the world. Derum wheat, T. derum, the tetraploid form of wheat and the second most widely cultivated wheat today. 11. Basic Agriculture. Major wheat producing areas of India. China. P.A.K.I.S.T.A.N. Tibet. Bhutan. Bangladesh. Myanmar. Major areas. Other areas. Bay of Bengal Arabian Sea, Lakshadweep, Sri Lanka, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, KM, KM 500-100-150-200, Nepal. Seed and sowing under irrigated timely sown condition, wheat sowing may be done in the first fortnight of November in North India and the middle of November in Northeast and Central India. Under late sown conditions, the wheat is sown in first fortnight of December. Rain-fed wheat is generally sown from second fortnight of October to early November to get maximum benefit from residual soil moisture. Seeds can be sown through broadcasting or in lines in rows 20 cm apart. Under normal conditions, a seed rate of 100 kg per hectare is sufficient. Under late sown conditions, seed rate should be increased by 25%. Irrigated wheat is spaced 22.5 cm between rows and 8 to 10 cm between plants. Rain-fed wheat is spaced 25 to 30 cm between rows and 5 to 6 cm between plants. Seed depth should be around 5 cm. A wheat field. 12. Nutrient management the general N plus P. 2O. 5 plus K. 2O recommendations for irrigated and rain-fed wheat are 120 plus 60 plus 30 kg per hectare and 80 plus 40 plus 20 kg per hectare, respectively. Full dose of phosphorus and potassium and half of nitrogen should be applied at the time of sowing, while remaining half dose should be top dressed in two equal splits one at first irrigation and other at flowering stage. Farmyard manure, FYM, or organic manures at 10 t per hectare at the time of sowing is beneficial for long-term fertility maintenance. Water management wheat requires about 300-400 cm of irrigation water, 4-6 irrigations, depending upon climatic factors, soil characteristics and the duration of the variety. 
If irrigation water is a constraint, then apply irrigation at critical stages. Table 5. Table 5. Number of irrigations based on the availability of water. No of irrigations. Critical stages for irrigation 1. Cre 2. CRI plus LJ3. CRI plus B plus M4. CRI plus LT plus F plus M5. CRI plus LT plus LJ plus F plus M6. CRI plus LT plus LJ plus F plus M plus D. Cre ground root initiation, 21 DAS LT, late tilling, 42 DAS LJ, late jointing, 60 DAS F, flowering, 80 DAS M, milk, 95 DAS D, dough, 115 DAS. Weed management The critical period of weed competition in wheat is 30 to 45 days after sowing, thus. Hand weeding with a kurpi or hand hoe after 2025, thus is used as conventional practice. A pre-emergence application of pendamethalin, storm 30 EC, at 1 kg A, I, per hectare in 500 to 750 L per hectare of water within 3 DAS provides a broad spectrum control of weeds in wheat. However, post-emergence application, 2530, das, of herbicides like sulfosulfurin at 25 grams per hectare or phenaxaprop P-ethyl at 100 to 120 grams per hectare is necessary for effective weed control. Disease management rusts, wheat is infected by brown, yellow and black rusts. Brown or leaf rust is caused by a fungus known as Puccinia recondite tritici. Yellow or stripe rust is caused by the fungus, Puccinia striae formus. Black or stem rust of wheat is caused by the fungus Puccinia. 13. Basic agriculture gramine strategy. For controlling rusts, treat the seed with Trichoderma viride at 4 grams per kilogram seed. Late sown crop is more susceptible to rust. Hence avoid late sowing of wheat. High nitrogen dose favors rust infection, whereas high potash dose reduces rust infection. Hence there is need for balanced fertilization. Spray the crop with propiconazole, till 25 EC, at 0.1% at yellow rust initiation. This spray will also help in the control of powdery mildew and carnal bun diseases. Second and third spray may be repeated with an interval of 10 to 15 days. Yellow rust. Loose smut. Carnal bunt. Loose smut. Loose smut is caused by fungus Ostilago nuda tritici. Terminal symptom of loose smut is the production of black powder in place of wheat grains in the ears. As the ear formation starts, fungus accumulates in the floral parts, which are completely destroyed due to formation of the black powder. Loose smut can be controlled by growing loose smut resistant varieties. Seed treatment should be done with carboxin, Vitivac 75 WP, at 1.25 grams per kilogram seed. Approve the infected plants, bury them underground or burn to avoid further field infection. Carnal bunt. Carnal bunt or partial bunt is caused by fungus Neovasia indica. A portion of infected grain along its groove is converted into a black powdery mass. The black powder gives a foul smell due to presence of trimethylamine. Do not grow highly susceptible wheat varieties. One spray of propiconazole, 25 EC, at 0.1% at ear-head emergence stage can be given to attain near-complete control. Pest management termites, the damaged plants dry up completely and can be easily pulled out. Infestation is heavy under unrogated conditions and in the fields where undecomposed FYM is applied before sowing. Termites can be controlled by seed treatment with fipronil, region 5 FS at 0.3. GA, I, per kilogram seed. Harvesting, threshing and yield the most suitable stage for harvesting wheat is when plants are completely dry and the grains becomes hard and contain 20-25% to moisture. Wheat crop harvested manually or by reapers, is dry for 3-4 to four days on the threshing floor and then threshing is done by threshers. A well-managed crop may yield about 3.5 to 4.5. T grains per hectare. 14. Maize. Maize, Z maize L, is one of the most versatile emerging crops having wider adaptability under varied agroclimatic conditions. It is the only grain crop with many types and grown for diverse purposes like normal yellow, white grain, sweet corn, baby corn, popcorn, quality protein maize, QPM, vaxi corn, high amylase corn, high oil corn, fodder maize etc. Globally, maize is known as queen of cereals because it has the highest genetic yield potential among the cereals. In India, maize is the third most important food crops after rice and wheat. According to latest data of 2011-12, it is cultivated in 8.78 meters ha mainly during Kharif season which covers 80% area. Predominant maize growing states collectively contributing to more than 80% of total national maize production are Andhra Pradesh, 20.9%, Karnataka, 16.5%, Rajasthan, 9.9%, Maharashtra, 9.1%, Bihar, 8.9%, Uttar Pradesh, 6.1%, Madhya Pradesh, 5.7%, and Himachal Pradesh, 4.4%. A view of maize field. Climatic and soil requirement maize is grown globally from 50 degrees north to 40 degrees south, and from sea level up to 4,000 meters altitude. Maize crop requires good amount of moisture and can be grown in areas receiving well-distributed rainfall of 500 to 1,000 millimeters. It uses water more efficiently and relatively drought resistant from establishment to tasseling stage of the crop where it can stands with less moisture. Maize is relatively well adapted to a wide range of soils with pH 5.0 to 8.0. Maize can be grown successfully in a variety of soils, ranging from loamy sand to clay loam. Being a sensitive crop to excess soil moisture, it is desirable to have provision of proper drainage in maize. 15. Basic agriculture. Maize-based cropping systems in India Maize wheat is the third most important cropping systems after rice wheat and rice rice that contributes about 3% in the national food basket. The other major maize systems in India are maize mustard, maize chickpea, maize maize, cotton maize etc. Time of sowing maize can be grown in all seasons with Kharif, monsoon, post-monsoon, rabi, winter, and spring. The optimum time of sowing are given below. Season. Optimum time of sowing Kharif. Last week of June to first fortnight July Rabi. Last week of October for intercropping and up to 15th of November for sole crop spring. First week of February. Seed rate and plant geometry The seed rate depends on purpose, seed size, plant type, season, sowing methods etc. The following crop geometry and seed rate should be adopted. S. No. Purpose. Seed rate, kilogram per hectare. Plant geometry, plant times row in CM, 1 normal grain maize. 20. 60 times 22 quality protein maize, QPM. 20. 60 times 23 sweet corn. 8. 75 times 25 4 popcorn. 12. 60 times 25 green cob, normal maize. 20. 60 times 26 fodder maize. 50. 30 times 10. Diligent crop establishment generally, the raised bed planting is considered as best planting method for maize during monsoon and winter seasons both under excess moisture as well as limited water availability, rainfed conditions. Maize can also be successfully grown without any primary tillage under no-till situation with less cost of cultivation, higher farm profitability and better resource use efficiency. Nutrient management application of 10 to 15 TFYM per hectare along with NPK fertilizer at 120 to 150 kg N, 60 to 80 kg P. 205. 60 to 70 kg K. 20 and 25 kg ZNSO. 
Photohectare is recommended in general for getting high yield of HYV, hybrid maize. Full dose of P and K and half of N should be applied at the time of sowing. By remaining half N dose should be top dressed in two equal splits, one dose at around knee high stage and other dose at tasseling stage of the crop keeping in due moisture availability in the field. 16. Water management. The irrigation water management depends on season as about 80% of maize is cultivated during monsoon season particularly under rain conditions. In general, the irrigation should be applied in furrows up to two-thirds road height of the ridges beds. Yin seedling, knee high stage, flowering and grain filling are the most sensitive stages for water stress and hence irrigation should ensure at these stages. Weed management weeds are a serious problem in maize particularly during kharif season and they cause up to 35% yield losses. Thus, timely weed management is must to achieve high yields. Pre-emergence application of a tracing, a tra 50 WP, at 1.0-1.5. Kilogram A, I, per hectare in 600 L water or pendamethalin, storm 30 EC, at 1 to 1.5. Kilogram A, I, in 500 to 750 L is effective way for weed control. 1 to 2 hoeing are recommended for aeration and uprooting of the remaining weeds, if any. Disease management The major diseases of maize and their management practices are described below. Tersicum leaf blight, the disease is prevalent in cooler conditions or with high humidity. Long, elliptical, grayish-green or tan lesions, 2.5 minus 15 centimeters, appear on lower leaves progressing upward. Resistant varieties along with need-based sprays of Manco 2.5. Gram per litter, with a juant at 0.05%, at 8 to 10 days interval decreases its incidence. Maize leaf blight, it is a major disease in the areas having warm humid temperate to tropical climate. Lesions on the leaves elongated between the veins, tan with buff to brown or dark reddish brown borders. Growing of resistant varieties with need-based sprays of Manco or Zineb at 2.5 grams per litter of water are recommended to control this disease. Tersicum leaf blight. Maize leaf blight. Pest management stem borer, major pest of maize in India is stop borer. Its attack occurs during monsoon season. It lays eggs 10 to 25 days after germination on lower side of the leaves. The lava of the chilo enters in the whirl and cause damage in the leaves. 17. Basic agriculture. Maize stem borer. Termites. Termites. Termite is also an important pest in many areas especially zero till maize. For control of termite, fipronil granules at 20 kg per hectare on termite appearance followed by light irrigation is the recommended practice. If the termite incidence is in patches, the spot application of fipronil at 2 to 3 granules, plants should be done. Harvesting, threshing and yield. The crop acquires physiological maturity when black layer starts forming on the tip of the grains. The crop must be harvested at less than 22 to 25 percent moisture in grains with husk color turning pale brown. The harvesting of the cob is done manually. After the cobbing and threshing, the maize grains must be dried up to 12 percent moisture level for safe storage. A well-managed maize HYVs and hybrid maize may yield about 4 to 5 and 5 to 70 grains per hectare, respectively. Chickpea. Chickpea, Cicer Ariatinum L, is commonly known as gram or Bengal gram in English and Chana in Hindi. It is predominantly grown as a rain-fed crop, but irrigated in areas where irrigation facilities are available. Chickpea is mostly consumed in the form of processed whole seed or dal or as dal flour, resin. Chickpea is a good source of protein, 18 to 22 percent, carbohydrate, 52 to 70 percent, fats, 4 to 10 percent, minerals, calcium, phosphorus, iron, and vitamins. Chickpea is known to have originated in Western Asia, probably Eastern Turkey. Daisy types are grown predominantly in Indian subcontinent, East Africa and Australia. India ranks first in area and production of chickpea at world level. Chickpea in India occupies 7.89 million hectares area, producing 7.06 million tons and a productivity of 895 kilograms per hectare. The major chickpea producing states are Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Haryana, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Bihar and West Bengal. 18. Different types of chickpeas. A view of chickpea field. Climatic and soil requirements Chickpea is essentially a subtropical crop, it grows well in a wide range of climates. Chickpea is grown between 10 on to 32 on latitude in the country in the winter season. This crop with deep-rooted system can be grown on residual soil moisture in areas with 600-1000 mm annual rainfall. Heavy rains at germination and flowering are detrimental to the crop. Chickpea is a long-day plant requiring 12 to 16 HRS bright sunshine per day. Chickpea is grown practically on a variety of soil types ranging from very light to heavy ones. In North India, it is cultivated on sandy loam to clay loam soils whereas in South on Deccan Plateau and Central India or Maharashtra, gram is raised on black cotton soils. The clay loams are the best. Cropping systems. Gram is grown mixed with wheat, barley, rapeseed and mustard crop. It is grown mixed with toria in Terai region. Gram is sown after the harvest of kharif crops like paddy, maize, sorghum, pulmonic etc. Gram in rotation with several crops helps in controlling soil bond diseases. The most common rotations are paddy gram, pulmonic gram, sorghum gram, maize gram, kharif fallow gram in drylands. Improved varieties Some of the recently released varieties have resistance, tolerance to major diseases like wilt, avrodhi, KWR 108, JG 74, JG 315, Vishal, Vijay, Pusa 391, Bharati, ICCC 32, Pusa 244, and Ascochita Blight, C235, Pusa 261, Gaurav, GNG 146, GNG 469, besides being more productive. Early maturing varieties, PBG1, Odai, Pusa 372, amenable for late planting under rice production system have been developed. Emphasis has also been laid on developing bold seeded genotypes both of Kabuli, Pusa 1003, and Desi types, K850, Pusa 256, Vishwas, Vishal, Pusa 362. Other important varieties of chickpea for different zones are, Tolerance to Salt, Karnal Chana 1, and Non-Lodging under High Input Management, DCP 92-3, have also been released. 19. Basic Agriculture. Land preparation gram needs cloudy and rough seed bed for good aeration in root zone. Hence, little land preparation is required. Desired seed bed may be obtained by a deep plowing followed by two harrowing. A deep summer plowing is essential for higher retention of moisture in soils where, the crop is grown on residual soil moisture as in Haveli system of Madhya Pradesh. Seed rate and spacing optimum plant spacing is 30 cm x 10 cm. The seed rate varies from 80 to 150 to 70 kg per hectare in Kabuli and Desi chickpeas. Under late sown conditions, the seed rate may be increased by 25 to 40 percent. Kabuli types are sown in rows 45 cm apart, while Desi types and late sown chickpeas are sown in 30 cm rows. Normally, 2 to 3 G fungicide, carbendazine, tirim, kaptan, per kilogram seed is recommended for seed treatment. The seed treatment of legumes is also done with rhizobium culture to capitalize upon their intrinsic capability and potentiality to trap atmospheric nitrogen in the root nodules through biological nitrogen fixation, BNF. Time of sowing planting time is the most important non-monetary input having profound effect on crop growth, phonological development, occurrence of pests and crop productivity. The sowing time varies in different states as given below. State. Rain fed. 
irrigated punjab and haryana second to third week of october fourth week of october to the 15th of november rajasthan first to the 15th of october the 15th to the 30th of october in south and southeastern rajasthan the 25th of october minus 15 november in ganganagar district bihar and gujarat the 15th of october to first week of november first fortnight of november madhya pradesh maharashtra uttar pradesh karnataka jammu kashmir and tamil nadu first fortnight of october end of october to first week of november nutrient management chickpea requires about 15 to 20 kg and 30 to 60 kg p 2 o 5 and 20 to 40 kg k 2 o per hectare is basal dose being legume it fixes atmospheric nitrogen in association with mesozoium cesare in order to meet the initial end requirement a starter dose of 15 to 20 kg n is sufficient at 20 time of sowing phosphorus is the most critical nutrient limiting chickpea production in general kabuli types require more pea fertilizer than desi chickpeas application of 20 to 30 kg per hectare gypsum in acidic soils and sulfur in non acidic soils is also necessary soil application of 20 kg znso 4 per hectare is necessary for better crop performance in zinc deficient soils dual inoculation with rhizobium and phosphate solubilizing bacteria psb is beneficial in chickpea cultivation bacillus polymixer and b megatherium cultures are being commercially produced for inoculation The symbiotic association between plant roots and mycorrhizal fungi has received greater attention in recent years. Dual inoculation with rhizobium and bamfather increases root nodulation and yield. Water management gram is mostly sown as a rain-fed crop and is capable of extraction moisture from a depth greater than 1 meter, with most of its roots confined to top 2 feet soil. However, where irrigation facilities are available, give a pre-sowing irrigation pailua. If winter rains fail, give one irrigation at pre-flowering stage and one at pod development stage. In no case, first irrigation should be given earlier than 4 weeks after sowing. The water requirement of the crop varies from 250 to 400 mm. Based on critical stages of irrigation, irrigate the crop at 4 to 6 leaf stage, at branching and pods formation stage. Nipping to get maximum yield from irrigated ground crop, the nipping, removal of the top auxiliary buds, is an essential operation. In this process, the apical buds of the crop is plucked, when the plants get height of 15-20 cm i.e. 50 days after sowing. By doing this, vegetative growth of plant stops and lateral branching is enhanced, thus the plants become more vigorous and produce more flowers and pods. Weed management ground suffers severely by infestation of weeds. Planting time considerably influences the occurrence and manifestation of weed species. The initial 4-8 to eight weeks are most critical for weed competition and the first mechanical weeding has been advised 2-5-3-0, das, and the second at 4-5-5-0, das. Chemical weed control with pendimethalin is pre-emergence at 1.0. Kilogram A I per hectare followed by 1.845 das has been proved effective. Intercropping chickpea with mustard reduces weed menace drastically. Disease management some important diseases causing substantial loss in chickpea production in India are as follows. Wilt the disease generally appears after 3 weeks of sowing. Internal tissues from the collar region downwards become dark and discolored. The petioles and ridges. 21. Basic agriculture along with leaflets droop down. Dropping starts from the upper part of the plant but soon the entire plant droops down. Sometimes only partial wilting of plants may occur. Crop rotation rowing out the infected plants from the field and treating the seeds before sowing with 0.2% thyrim or kaptan or babistan 50% at 250 grams Q seed minimizes disease infestation. Ascochita blight it is an airborne fungal disease caused by Ascochita rabi small circular brown spots appear on the leaves these spots have discolored margin later black minute dots appear on necrotic lesions arranged in circles high humidity favors this disease use of tolerant varieties rowing out the infected plants seed treatment and spraying the crop with 0.2% kaptan or ditani z78 are the recommended control measures seed treatment with babistan at 2.5 cheaper kilogram seed or with trichoderma viride at 4 grams plus vitivax at 1 gram by making a paste in 5 ml of water per kilogram seed is also effective for root rot and blight pest management gram pod bora the young larvae feed for a short period on tender organs of the plant With the pod formation, larvae feed on developing seeds after cutting a round hole in the pod and pushing its head inside the pod. Pod borers generally feed on the leaves, buds and pods. Spraying of the crop with insecticides such as Clofidifo 0.07% or with botanical pesticide like neem seed kernel extract 5%, Nimbacidin, Nemex, Achuk or other neem-based products or microbial products like NPV 250 LE per hectare provides effective control against gram pod borer. Cutworm, the insect remains hidden during day and becomes active during night. The caterpillar cut the plants at the base, below or just above the soil surface or may even cut branches. Cutworm and pod borer are major pests of chickpea. The cultural practices involve plowing of the field after harvesting the crop to expose hibernating pupae of a grostus and helicopapa, clean cultivation, removing plant debris, early planting, intercropping but mustard, linseed, safflower, etc. Need-based application of insecticides at appropriate time is necessary. Harvesting, threshing and yield. In North Indian plains, crop matures in 150 to 160 days, whereas in Central and South Zone crop matures in 120 to 125 days. Crop becomes ready for harvest when leaves turn reddish brown and start shedding. Plants are either plucked out by hand or cut with sickle. The crop is allowed to dry in sun and on threshing floor in about 5 to 6 days. Therefore, threshing is done either by beating the plant with stick or by trampling under the feet of bullocks. A well-managed desi chickpea yields about 20 to 25 q grain per hectare, while kabuli types yield 25 to 30 q per hectare under irrigated conditions. Under rain-fed conditions, the crop yields 30 to 50 percent of that of irrigated crop. 22. P I G E O N P E A. In India, pigeon pea, Cajunus cajun L, occupies about 90 percent of global area and 85 percent of world production. Pigeon pea or red broom is commonly known as arhar or tur in Hindi. It is the second most important pulse crop in India next to chickpea with respect to area and production. Pigeon pea seeds used as dal are rich in protein, 21 percent, iron and iodine. They are also rich in essential amino acids like lysine, tyrosine, cysteine and arginine. Pigeon pea being a legume possesses valuable property as restorer of nitrogen in soil. It is mainly a kharif crop. With the development of short duration varieties, the cultivation of pigeon pea in summer season is also receiving attention particularly in the intercropping systems in north and northeastern states. India has the largest area, 3.38 million hectares under pigeon pea. Maturity duration of pigeon pea varies from about 90 days for extra early varieties to more than 260 days for late maturing varieties that fit well in various niches and cropping systems. A view of pigeon pea field. Climate and soil requirements pigeon pea is a crop of arid and semi-arid climates grown between 30 on and 35 OS latitudes and thrives well in areas with 500 1000 mm of rainfall. Its drought hardy nature due to deep tap root system makes it a crop of low rainfall situations. It is grown in the temperature ranges of 20 to 40 oak and can withstand a minimum temperature of 10 degrees Celsius and maximum temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Sandy loam to loam soil with sufficient organic matter content is ideal for cultivation of pigeon pea. 
The soil should be deep, well-drained and free from soluble salts. It can be grown on soils with a pH range of 5, 5 minus 8.0. Successfully, but most favorable pH for its growth and development is 6.0 minus 6.5. 23. Basic agriculture. Varieties based on time required for maturity. All the varieties have been classified into three groups with I. Short duration, 120 to 150 days, E. Medium duration, 150 to 180 days, E. Long duration, 180 to 300 days. Selection of varieties should be done carefully keeping in mind the climate, water retention capacity of the soil, water availability and irrigation conditions. In case of rain-fed conditions with low to no moisture availability beyond October and poor soils, early maturing varieties, 120 to 150 days, should be preferred over medium and long duration. Some of improved pigeon pea cultivars are, PUSA 855, PUSA 991, PUSA 992, PUSA 2001, PUSA 2002, UPAS 120, MANIC, AL15, and AL201. For arhar beet rotation, PUSA 991, PUSA 992, PUSA 2001 and PUSA 2002 are suitable cultivars. Sowing time redbrim is grown during June to July. Ideal time for sowing is second week of June to second week of July. Under delayed monsoon conditions, it can be sown up to end of August. Treat the seeds with trichoderma viride, 8 grams per kilogram of seed. Dry the seeds in shade. Then again treat the seeds with redbrim rhizobium and PSB biofertilizer, 5 grams, kilogram seed, and dry the treated seeds in shade. Such treated seeds should be sown within 4 to 6 hours of treatment. Seed rate and sowing in general, a seed rate of 8 to 10 kg for long duration, 10 to 12 kg for medium and 12 to 15 kg, half a short duration varieties is sufficient in pigeon pea. Seeds are sown 4 to 6 cm deep, when the soil is wet. In short duration varieties, a row spacing of 40 to 60 cm and intra row spacing of 10 to 15 cm is optimum. While long duration varieties require 60 to 120 cm intra row and 10 to 20 cm intra row spacing. Quantity of seed and spacing depending upon the variety and its crop duration are as follows. Very early maturing. Monocrop, 20 kg per hectare, spacing 120 times 30 cm early maturing. Monocrop, 20 kg per hectare, spacing 120 times 30 cm medium duration. Monocrop, 15 kg per hectare, spacing 60 times 20 cm intercrop, 5 kg per hectare, spacing 30 times 20 cm long duration. Monocrop, 12 to 15 kg per hectare, spacing 60 times 20 cm intercrop, 5 kg per hectare, spacing 90 times 20 cm. Cultural operations between 50 and 60 days of germination, the main shoot tip and the secondary branch tips are pruned. This promotes development of large number of tertiary shoots, which bear more number of pods, thus increasing the yield by 30 to 50%. 24. Nutrient management is redbrim is a deep-rooted crop, it requires at least one deep tilling of 1 to 1.5 feet and one shallow tilling. Application of 5 to 10 TFYM mixed with 5 kg PSB during last tilling, when soil is wet is highly beneficial. Apply 20 kg nitrogen, 50 kg P. 2O. 5. 20 to 30 kg K. 2O plus 20 kg sulfur per hectare as a basal dressing. Fertilizer should be broadcasted evenly and mixed thoroughly in the soil at the time of final preparation of land before sowing. Water management redbrim requires 35 to 40 cm water during its entire growth period. Optimum moisture is necessary during budding, flowering and pod formation stages. Red gram grown in assured rainfall areas, usually it does not require any irrigation. If there is water stress, protective irrigation may be given in alternate rows at these three stages. Use harvested intercrops biomass as mulch to preserve soil moisture and to maintain microbial activity. Weed management Weed management is required only up to 60 days of crop growth, as this is the time when weeds compete with the crop for nutrients. First weeding is done at 2.025 das, while second hoeing is done at 5.060 das. Pre-emergence application of pendimethalin at 1.0 kg A, I, per hectare is quite effective in controlling weeds. Disease management during the growing phase, incidence of yellow mosaic can be seen. The affected plants show yellow mottled symptoms. These plants can be rouged out as and when they appear. White fly is known to spread this disease, hence after removal of the affected plants, an insecticide spray is important. Apart from this, redbrim is also affected by root rotten wilt, where the affected areas are sprayed with 0.1% baviston solution. Pest management pod borer, pod borer survives on many host plants across different seasons, including cotton and legumes. Redbrim is its preferred choice. Monocrotophos, 0.04%, spray at pre and post flowering stage is effective in controlling this pest. Harvesting, threshing and yield when most of the leaves are shed and 80% pods turn brown, is the best time for harvest. A grain yield of 15 to 20 q per hectare is rain-fed intercrop and 25 to 30 q per hectare is irrigated monocrop can be obtained. Very early and early varieties yield 20 to 30 percent less. Dry clean seeds in sun to ensure moisture below 8 percent. Beetles affect redbrim in storage. Mix crushed neem leaves with grain and store in gunny bags. Gunny bags can also be treated with 5 percent neem oil. 25. Basic agriculture. P. P. Pisum sativum L is an important pulse crop in India. There are two types of cultivated P. I.e. garden P. Pisum sativum bar, hartums, and field P. Pisum sativum bar, allens. The field P is generally grown for dry seeds, which are used for a variety of snack preparations and dal. The mature pea is highly nutritive containing high proportion of digestive proteins, 22.5%, carbohydrates, 62.1%, fats, 1.8%, minerals, calcium, iron, and vitamins, riboflavin, thymine, etc. In India, field pea occupies an area of 0.62 million hectares with an annual production of 0.56 million tons. The average productivity is 906 kg per hectare. The major field pea growing states are Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and Maharashtra. Improved varieties Some prominent varieties of field pea recommended for cultivation in different states of India are 1P5, DMR11, BL1, T163, Rachna, PG3 and Pusa Prabhat. A view of garden pea and field pea. Climate and soil requirements Peas require a cool growing season with moderate temperatures and relatively high humidity. Most cultivars have light frost tolerance, however, temperature greater than 27 degrees Celsius adversely affects the crop. Peas are most sensitive to moisture stress at flowering stage. High humidity associated with cloudy weather results into spread of fungal diseases like damping off, powdery mildew etc. A well-drained sandy loam or sandy clay loam is required for successful production of peas. It prefers soil with pH 6.5-7.5. Cropping systems Peas are generally grown mixed with wheat, barley, oats, rapeseed and mustard crops. It is also raised as an intercrop in autumn sugarcane. The most popular rotations involving pea are, paddy pea, maize pea, sorghum pea, pulmillet pea, cotton pea, maize early pea sugarcane, and maize pea okra etc. 26. Seed and sowing method The optimum time for sowing field peas in North Indian conditions is second fortnight of October. Seed rate for pea varies with the varieties, sizes of seeds and method of sowing. A seed rate of 60 to 80 kg per hectare is required when the crop is sown for grain crop. 
Before sowing, the seed should be treated with tirim at 0.25%. For good nodulation, seed should be treated with rhizobium leguminoserum culture. PP is sown at a spacing of 30 to 45 cm apart. Nutrient management being a legume, it requires a starter dose of about 20 kg N per hectare, besides 50 to 60 kg P. 2 5 and 30 to 40 kg K2O per hectare at the time of planting. Water management drought is major constraint for pea plantation in India. The crop is generally sown after irrigation. Special precautions should be taken while irrigating a pea crop, light and uniform irrigation should be given. Irrigation at branching and flowering stages is critical for optimum yields. Weed management the crop suffers from a severe weed competition in its early growth with 3 4 5 thus is critical period of crop weed competition. The field should be kept free from weeds by giving two weedings and hoeing after 3 and 6 weeks of germination. Pre-emergence application of pendimethalin at 1.0 kg A, I, per hectare is quite effective in controlling weeds. Disease management powdery mildew, white powdery growth or fungus mycelium and spores develop on leaves, branches, stems, tendrils, petioles and pods. Pods get loose, bright green, have shiny surface and look dull. Several powdery mildew resistant varieties such as Rachna, Punt Mutter 5, DMR7, Hub 2 are available. In case of occurrence on susceptible varieties, spray vetable sulfur 70WP, sulfex, 0.3% at 10 days interval on the susceptible varieties. Pest management major insect pests causing damage to pea crop are leaf miner and pea pod borer. For pea pod borer, crop may be sprayed with monocrotophores 0.04% at 10 to 15 days interval beginning with pod formation. Harvesting, threshing and yield field peas should be harvested when they are fully ripe and threshed after sufficient drying in the sun. By adopting improved package of practices, the crop can yield 10 to 12 T green pods per hectare. Field peas can yield about 2 to 3 T grains per hectare. 27. Basic agriculture. Lentil. Lentil, Lensculinaris medic, is commonly consumed as dal. Tihal lentil seeds contain 24 to 26% protein, 1.3% fat, 2.2% ash, 3.2% fiber and 57% carbohydrate. It is a rich source of CA, 68 mg, 100 g seed, P, 300 mg, 100 g seed, and Fe, 7 mg, 100 g seed. In India, major lentil producing areas are situated in Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. In India, lentil is the second most important winter pulse crop after chickpea. The area, production and productivity of lentil is around 1.34 million hectares, 0.88 mt and 660 kg per hectare, respectively. Climatic and soil requirements lentil does not respond to temperatures above 27 degrees Celsius, hence it is grown as a winter season crop in semi-arid tropics. It can be raised with the moisture conserved in the soil during the monsoon season. It is very hardy plant and can tolerate frost and severe winter to a great extent. It is moderately drought tolerant crop. A view of lentil field. Soil should be made friable and weed free so that seeding could be done at a uniform depth. In the case of light soils, less tillage is required to prepare an ideal seed bed. On heavy soils, one deep plowing followed by two to three cross harrowings should be given. Improved varieties Some of the prominent lentil cultivars are Vipasha, WBL58, Punt L406, Punt L639, Malika, BL Masur 4, Sapna, Punt L4, DPL15 and DPL62. Cropping systems Lentil is grown mixed with barley, toria, rape and mustard crops. It is also raised as an intercrop in autumn sugarcane. Intercropping of linseed plus lentil 2, 1, lentil plus mustard, 4 to 6, 1 in Bundelkhand region of Uttar Pradesh is also promising. Rice lentil is the most common rotation. Other rotations are groundnut lentil, sorghum lentil. 28. Pulmonate lentil, maize lentil, cotton lentil, curry fallow lentil, rain fed areas, rice lentil plus mustard, maize, fodder. Seed and sowing method optimum seed rate for normal sown crop is 30 to 40 kg per hectare. Seed rate should be increased to 50 to 60 kg in case of late sowing. Treat the seed with tirim at 2 kg per kg seed before sowing. The lentil seed should be treated before sowing with rhizobium culture. Crop is sown at a spacing of 30 cm apart in rows using seed drill. The crop may be sown in the second fortnight of October. Delay in planting causes reduction in yield. Lentil seeds should be sown at a depth of 3 minus 4 cm. Nutrient management applied 20 to 30 kg N per hectare is starter dose, besides 40 to 60 kg P. 2 O. 5 and 20 to 30 kg K. 2 O per hectare is basal dose in lentil. The crop also responds to 20 kg sulfur per hectare both under rainfed and irrigated conditions. Water management The crop requires 200 mm of water depending on soil and climate. Lentil requires 1 to 2 irrigations during the growing season. Apply first irrigation at 6 weeks after sowing and second at flowering or pod formation stage. Weed management The period from 30 to 60 das is most crucial for competition with weeds. Two weedings at 30 and 60 das are enough. Pre-emergence application of pendimethalin at 1.0 kg A, I, per hectare in 750 liters of water is quite effective in controlling weeds. Pest management aphid is major pest of lentil. In case of severe infestation, leaves and shoots get deformed and stunted and sticky honeydew may be deposited over the leaf surface. Usually, only one spray of cypomethrine 0.004% is sufficient to control aphid damage. Disease management The major diseases of lentil are built in rust. Seed treatment with systemic fungicides such as tirim plus carbendazine, 1, 1, at 2.5. Cheaper kilogram seed and crop rotations help in minimizing incidence of wilt, root rot and collar rot. Fallen spray of mancozabert 50 das has been found very effective against rust. Harvesting, threshing and yield lentil crop should be harvested when the plants dry up and pods are mature. Threshing is done either by beating the plants with sticks. Clean and dry the seeds in sun to bring moisture content down to 12% for safe storage. A well-managed crop yields about 1.5 minus 2.0. T grains per hectare. 29. Basic agriculture. BLACKGRAM. Black gram, Bigna mango, is popular as Urad dal. India is major producer and consumer of black gram in the world. It is an important pulse crop and serves as a major source of dietary protein for majority of people. It contains about 25-28% protein, 1.0-1.5% oil, 3.5-4.5% fiber, 4.5-5.5% ash and 62-65% carbohydrates on dry weight basis. Main use of black gram is to make dal. Apart from this, it is also used in making uttappa, dosa, idli, vada, dal makhani etc. It is grown all over the country in Kharif and summer seasons. It is cultivated over an area of about 29.68 lakh ha with total production of 12.45 lakh tons. In India, black grim is very popularly grown in Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Punjab, Haryana and Karnataka. A field view of black grim. Climatic and soil requirements Most suitable climate to cultivate black grim is 27 minus 30 degrees Celsius with heavy rainfall. It is grown as rain-fed crop in the warm plains as well as in the cool hills, up to an altitude of 2000 meters. It is highly drought-resistant but susceptible to frost, water logging and salinity. A well-distributed 60 to 75 cm rainfall is highly suitable. 
It prefers water retentive, stiff loamy or heavy soils, and does well on both black cotton soils and brown alluvium. Cropping systems it is cultivated in three different seasons with Kharif, Ravi and Summer, but maximum area is occupied under Kharif season mostly as intercrop with sorghum, pearl millet, maize, cotton, castor, pigeon pea etc. Some suitable intercropping systems are paddy wheat, bean, maize rapeseed, seed bean, herd bean wheat, moon bean, herd bean mustard, moon bean, herd bean, potato wheat, herd bean etc. 30. Varieties The resistant varieties to yellow mosaic virus are Uttara, Narendra Erd 1, Panth U19, Panth U30, UG218 and WBU108. The resistant varieties to powdery mildew are LBG402, TPU4 and LBG17. Other varieties are Pusa1, UPU1, UPU2, TPU-4, TAU-1, TAU2 etc. Seed and sowing method The seed treatment with fungicides like Kaptan, Thirim or Baviston at 2-3 to gram per kilogram seed before sowing effectively controls diseases. Seed treatment with rhizobium has been found to improve yields of pulses. A seed rate of 15-20 to 20 kg per hectare for Kharif and 25 kg for summer season has been recommended for Blackgram. Sown with the onset of monsoon i.e. June-July. Nutrient management The starter dose of N at 20 to 25 kg per hectare besides 50 to 60 kg P. 30. 5 and 30 to 40 kg K. 2 O per hectare is basal application has been found optimum for blackgram. Seed treatment with rhizobium is also beneficial. Water management irrigations during flowering, pod formation and seed development are must. In heavy rainfall areas, crop needs proper drainage as the crop is very sensitive to water logging. Weed management 1 or 2 hand weeding at 20 to 30 and 4 oh, 4 5 does give better weed control. Among chemical weed control method, pre-emergence application of pendimethalin at 1.0 kg A, I, per hectare in 750 liters of water is quite effective. Disease management Cercospora leaf spot, angular brown or red spots, with grey or brown center and reddish purple border on leaves, stock and pods. Spray with Bordeaux mixture, 5, 550 or 0.2% zirim. Powdery mildew, white powdery patches on leaves and other green parts, later becoming dull colored and are studded with black dot. Dust the crop with finely powdered sulfur, 200 mesh, at 20 kg per hectare. Viral diseases, these diseases can be minimized by controlling their vector through spraying metasis stalks, 0.01% and uprooting and destroying the infected plants. Pest management pod borer, caterpillars feed on tender foliage and young pods. They make holes in the pods and feed on developing seeds. Spraying the crop with 0.05% quinalfos can successfully control the pest. 31. Basic agriculture. Harvesting, threshing and yield crop is harvested before it is dead ripe. The plants are cut with sickle, dried for 7 to 10 days and threshed by beating with sticks and then winnowed. The seeds should be dried to around 10 to 12 percent moisture. A good crop of blackgram may yield 1.0-1.5. Tea grains per hectare. G-R-E-E-N-G-R-A-M. Green gram, Bigna radiata, is the third most important pulse crop after chickpea and pigeon pea. Green gram or moong is a protein-rich staple food. It contains about 25 percent protein. It is a drought-resistant crop and suitable for summer cultivation, dryland farming and predominantly used as an intercrop with other crops being a short-duration crop. In India, it is grown on 3.11 million hectares area in almost all the states. Green Grim Climate and soil requirements Green Grim is a tropical crop, but can also be grown in subtropical region and cultivated in areas between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south latitude. It is cultivated all the year round in peninsular India, and during Kharif, spring and summer seasons in North India. It is grown in the areas having an annual rainfall of 50-75 cm. It can be grown from sea level to an altitude of 2,000 meters. A well-drained loamy to sandy loam soil is the best soil for its cultivation. The crop does not grow well on saline and alkaline soil or waterlogged soils. Waterlogging affects the crop adversely. Varieties Some promising varieties are County 4, Punt Moon 2, Tap 7, BM4, Mum 2, LGG407, LGG450, Term 1, Term 2, PDM11, PDM54, PDM139, Pusa105, Pusa Besaki, Pusa Bishal, 668 Samarinese layers, Pusa672 and Pusa9531. 32. Seed and sowing method The quantity of seed required is about 12 kg per hectare for Kharif crop and 20 kg per hectare for Rabi crop. Seed should be treated with Kaptan or Tirim at 2.5. Cheaper kilogram seed is precaution against any seed-borne disease. In North India, this crop is sown with the onset of monsoon i.e., second fortnight of June to first fortnight of July. In South India, it is sown during the month of OCT. November. In summer season, it is sown from March-April. The line sowing is done at a spacing of 30-45 cm. Weed management 1 or 2 weedings or hoeings are done at about 20 and 25 das depending on weed growth. Pre-emergent spray of pendimethalin 30 acre at 1.0. Kilogram A, I, per hectare is recommended for chemical weed management. Nutrient management The crop requires 20 kg nitrogen and 50 kg phosphorus per hectare at the time of sowing. Water management Normally, green room is grown under rainfed conditions. The right stages of irrigation are branching stage, full bloom stage and pod formation stage. Excess irrigations result in delayed maturity and poor yield. About 4 to 5 irrigations are enough during whole crop period. Water logging in the field should be avoided. Disease management Cercospora leaf spot, angular brown or red spots, with grey or brown center and reddish purple border on leaves, stock and pods. Spray with Bordeaux mixture, 5, 550 or 0.2% zirim. Spray Ditani Z78 at 2 kg or Ditani M45 at 2 kg in 750 liters of water per hectare. Yellow mosaic, this disease is caused by a virus. It is more common in northern India. Yellow, diffuse brown spots scattered in the leaf lamina are initial symptoms. These spots expand rapidly. Viral disease can be minimized by controlling the vector through spraying metasis stocks, 0.01%. Pest management pod borer, caterpillars feed on tender foliage and young pods. They make holes in the pods and feed on developing seeds. Spraying the crop with 0.05% quinalfos can successfully control the pest. Harvesting, threshing and yield shattering of pods is a great problem in this crop. Thus, picking should be done as the pods mature. Harvesting should be completed in 2-3 to three pickings. The pods after complete drying should be threshed manually. A good crop of green room may yield about 1.0-1.5. Tons of grain per hectare. 33. Basic agriculture. Soybean. Soybean, Lysine Max L, is the most important oil seed crop of India and the world. Soybean contains 20-25% oil and 40-45% proteins. India ranks 4th in acreage and 5th in production of soybean in the world. It contributes greatly to the edible oil pool of the country and also earns sizable amount of foreign exchange. Soybean production in India at present time is restricted primarily in Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. Fig. 1. Soybean production areas in India. Climatic and soil requirements Soybean grows well in warm and moist climates from sea level to an elevation of 3,000 meters. The crop cannot tolerate frost and waterlogging. It is grown in areas receiving 40 to 75 cm annual rainfall. 
It is a short day plant and requires a photoperiode of 13 to 14 hours. Soybean performs better in well-drained sandy loam to clay soil with medium water holding capacity. Acidic and alkaline soils inhibit the germination of seed. Water lobing is injurious to the crop. Soil depth should be adequate. Cropping system soybean wheat. Soybean chickpea. Soybean potato. Soybean mustard. Soybean lentil are major crop rotations. Soybean can be grown in intercropping systems like soybean plus pigeon pea, soybean plus sorghum, soybean plus maize, soybean plus pulmillet, soybean plus cotton. 34. Varieties Some promising varieties are Pusa 9712, BL Soya 2, Palam Soya, PS 1241, BLS 65, Pusa 22, Pusa 16, Pusa 24, Pusa 37, Gujarat Soybean 1, and Bilsa Soybean 1. Yellow Soybean. Seed and sowing method Optimum seed rate is the prerequisite to have good yields of soybean. Seed can be treated with Thirum 75WP plus Carbendazine 50WP, 2, 1, at 3 grams per kilogram seed at Trichoderma Viride at 4 to 5 GM per kilogram seed for reducing the incidence of insect pests and diseases. Following seed rates should be used in soybean cultivars. Whole seeded varieties. 80 to 85 kg per hectare medium seeded varieties. 70 to 75 kg per hectare small seeded. 60 to 65 kg per hectare. Timely sowing is very important to harness full yield potential of soybean. Sowing of rain-fed soybean should start with the onset of rainy season. Generally, soybean is planted during June-July. Recommended sowing time for Kharif season soybean in different parts of the country is June-July. Soybean should be planted in lines at distance of 40 to 60 cm and plant to plant distance of about 5 cm. Seeding depth should be 3-4 cm. Nutrient management soybean is a heavy nutrient feeder and requires 20 to 25 kg N, 60 to 80 kg P. 2 5 and 40 to 50 kg K. 2 per hectare besides 20 to 25 kg sulfur per hectare is basal dose. About 5 to 10 T per hectare well decomposed FYM should be incorporated well in advance to sowing. Seed should be treated with relevant rhizobium culture. 35. Basic agriculture. Water management soybean is grown as rain-fed crop during rainy season in northern India, as summer irrigated crop in central India and post-rainy season crop on stored soil moisture in black cotton soils and as irrigated crop during summer in northern parts of the country. Adequate soil moisture is vital at critical growth periods for soybean specifically at sowing, flowering, and pod formation stages. Weed management soybean is a very vigorous crop that can compete many weeds while achieving full canopy. Two hand weedings at 20 to 25 and 4 o, 4 5 thus are sufficient for control of weeds. Pendimethalin at 1 kg A, I, per hectare or metal lore at 1 kg A, I, per hectare are used as pre-emergence herbicides in 750 L water per hectare. Amazathapir at 75 to 100 grams A, I, per hectare or quizilofor at 50 grams A, I, per hectare are used as post-emergence, 1 5 2 o, thus, herbicides in 750 L water per hectare. Disease management downy mildew, small chlorotic spots appear on the upper surface of the leaves, which later turn grayish to dark brown with downy growth on the lower surface of the leaves. For control, the seed should be treated with kaptan at 3.0. G per kilogram seed before sowing. Spraying the crop with copper oxychloride 50% at 5.0. Gram per liter water has been found effective in controlling the disease. Yellow mosaic virus. Yellow mosaic is an important virus disease. It is transmitted by white fly. The affected leaves become yellow with a slight crinkling and reduction in size. Regular spraying of the crop with methyl demetin 25A, metasystox 25PC, at 1.5. Milliliter per liter water starting from third week onwards at an interval of 10 to 15 days keep the white fly population under control and the crop becomes free from the incidence of yellow mosaic virus. Pest management gram pod borer. The caterpillar makes holes in the pod and feeds on the ripening grains. The caterpillar, as it grows, bores into green pods and destroys the seeds completely. It can be controlled by dusting the crop with monocrotophores 36 SL at 1.5 milliliter per liter water. The insecticide is applied at the fruiting stage and it may be repeated at the interval of 10 days. Harvesting, threshing and yield the plant is harvested when the leaves turn yellow and finally drop and only the pods remain on the stalk. Harvesting is done either by cutting the plants close to the ground with sickles. The harvested plants are carried to the threshing floor and dried in the sun about a week. It can also be threshed by weed thresher after some adjustments. A moisture content of 13 to 14 percent is ideal for threshing with thresher. A good crop of soybean may yield about 2.0 minus 2.5 T grains per hectare. 36. Rapeseed and mustard. The rapeseed mustard group broadly includes Indian mustard, yellow sarsong, brown sarsong, rare, and torio crops. Indian mustard, brassica jansa, is predominantly cultivated in Rajasthan, UP, Haryana, MP, and Gujarat. Brown sarsong is cultivated in Assam, Bihar, Arisa, and West Bengal. Kobi sarsong, B, Napas L, and Karan Rai, brassica carinata, are the new emerging oilseed crops. In India, rapeseed mustard is grown on an area of 5.53 meters hard with production and productivity of 6.41 mt and 1157 kg per hectare, respectively. A view of mustard field. Climatic and soil requirements rapeseed mustard crops are basically cultivated in temperate region, however, they have wider adaptability. Rainfall, high humidity and cloudy weather are not favorable for the crop. Rapeseed and mustard are long-day plants. They require an annual precipitation of 40 to 100 cm. Rapeseed and mustard may grow under sandy loam to clay loam soils but they thrive well on light loam soils. These crops also do not tolerate water logging. Cropping systems rapeseed and mustard are generally grown mixed with rabi crops like wheat, barley and chickpea. Some of cropping sequences in major rapeseed mustard cultivated states are rice storia, rice storia mung bean, maize storia wheat, groundnut mustard, cotton mustard, gobi sarsong, rice gobi sarsong mung bean, maize storia sugarcane, rice mustard, yellow sarsong, black gram sarsong or rare, gua sarsong or rare, maize sarsong or rare. 37. Basic agriculture. Varieties Some promising varieties of rapeseed and mustard group are as under. S. No. Crop. Varieties 1 Indian mustard, Brassica Jansa, RH9304, RH9801, RH30, RH819, T59 to Karan Rai, Brassica Carinata. Pusa Savani, Pusa Aditya 3 Brown Sarsong, Brassica Rapavar. Brown Sarsong, BSH1, Pusa Kalyani, KBS3. 4 Toria. TH68, Sangam and TL15, Bhavani 5 Yellow Sarsong, Brassica Rapavar. Yellow Sarsong, YST151, Type 42, K88, YAS24, PS66, NDYS842. 6 Gobi Sarsong, Brassica Nappers. Neelam, Sheetal, ONK1, Piola 401, Hybrid, 7 Black Mustard, Brassica Nigra, Surya. Seed rate and sowing method generally, under irrigated condition, 3 to 4 kg seed is sufficient for sowing of 1 hectare area whereas, the seed rate can be increased to 5 kg per hectare under rainfed condition depending upon the availability of soil moisture. 
The rapeseed mustard is small seeded crop. Therefore, the field should be well prepared for uniform germination. Rapeseed mustard seedlings are very susceptible to crusted soil. It requires fine seed bed. Field should be plowed by mold boat plow or tractor drawn harrow. Before pre sowing irrigation followed by two plowing with cultivator are required to prepare good seed bed. There should be no clod or weeds at sowing time. The crop of toria is to be sown in the last week of August to mid-September. Whereas, the 25th of September to the first fortnight of October is the most appropriate time of sowing mustard crop in conserved moisture. Under irrigated conditions, the sowing of rare should be completed by the 20th of October. Rapeseed mustard crop should be sown in lines 30 cm apart with plant to plant distance of 10 to 15 cm and at a depth of 4 to 5 cm under irrigated conditions, whereas a row spacing of 45 cm is beneficial and practical in rainfed conditions. In order to maintain the proper plant population, thinning is to be done after 20 to 25 days of sowing. Nutrient requirements for rainfed crop apply 40 kg N and 20 kg P. 2 5 per hectare. In irrigated areas apply 60 kg N, 20 kg P. 2 5 and 25 kg K. 2 per hectare for toria and mustard, 80 kg N, 40 kg P. 2 5 and 25 kg K. 2 per hectare for rear. Apply half dose of nitrogen and full dose of P and K at sowing time and remaining half N is stopped rest at the time of first irrigation. Rapeseed mustard is highly responsive to P, S, zinc and boron. It is advisable to apply phosphorus through single superphosphate because it contains 12% sulfur, which is required for increasing the oil content. Seed treatment with azotobacter has been found beneficial to the crop. 38. Water management two irrigations, one at flowering and another at silicate development stage, are recommended. If irrigation water is available for one irrigation only, then the crop should be irrigated at the time of flowering. Frost management occasionally, frost prevails from last week of December to January end in north and northwestern parts of the country resulting into considerable yield loss. Irrigate and smoke the fields when the temperature is low. Usually 30 to 45 days after anthesis is most sensitive. Weed management hand weeding twice at 30 and 45 thousand an application of pendimethalin at 0.75 to 1.0. Kilogram A, I, per hectare is pre-emergence is effective in weed management. Disease management white rust, albergo candida, the dangerous stage is floral infection in which the floral parts are malformed and become thick leathery green. The branches become zigzag in structure and white growth of the fungus can be seen on these affected branches. Alternary blight, small light brown brown spots develop on the lower leaves first and then on upper leaves after 40 das. Later on, these spots develop into big circular dark colored with concentric rings clearly visible in these spots. When the temperature ranges from 18-25 degrees Celsius with high humidity, 80%, dense crop canopy and rains during February increases the disease at faster rate. Downy mildew, at flowering stage, the whole inflorescence is malformed and becomes thick green, twisted and covered with white cottony growth. Disease development is favored by a temperature 10-20 degrees Celsius and wet weather. For the control of white rust, alternaria and downy mildew spray mancozabe 1.5. Kilogram per hectare at initial appearance of white rust or alternaria and repeat the spray 1-3 times after 15 days. Pest management mustard aphid, this is the most important pest of rapeseed and mustard. Spray the crop with 625 to 1000 ml oxymetin methyl, metasystox 25 EC, or dime to 8, rogo, 38 after diluting it in 625 to 1000 L water per hectare. Harvesting, threshing and yield usually rapeseed mustard crops are harvested as soon as 75% of the pods turn yellow and moisture content of the seed is around 30 to 40%. Bundles of the harvested plants are staked and dried in the sun for a few days. Threshing is done by the usual method of threshing by bullocks or running a tractor over the dried plants. Moisture. 39. Basic agriculture content of the seed must be less than 8% at the storage time. Under normal conditions, rapeseed yields about 1.4 minus 2.0. T per hectare of seed, wild mustard may give 2.0 minus 2.5. T per hectare. Average yield in rapeseed and mustard group are, toria, 12 to 15 q per hectare, yellow or brown sarsone, 12 to 15 q per hectare, and rye, 15 to 20 q per hectare. Groundnut. Groundnut, Arachis hypovia L, is also called peanut or mumphali. Groundnut seed contains about 45% oil and 26% protein. Peanuts are a good source of niacin, folate, fiber, magnesium, vitamin E, manganese and phosphorus. Globally, India occupies the first place in acreage and second in production. In India, groundnut occupies an area of 5.86 meters half with production and productivity of 8.26 mt and 1,411 kg per hectare, respectively. The main groundnut growing states are Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka and Rajasthan. Morphologically, groundnuts have been divided into two groups, I, erect or bunch type, Arachis hypovia subspecies fastidiata, E, trailing or spreading type, Arachis hypovia subspecies procumbens. Groundnut plant. Climatic and soil requirements groundnut is grown in the tropical and subtropical countries and up to an altitude of 1,000 meters. The crop can be grown successfully in places receiving a minimum rainfall of 500 mm and a maximum of 1,250 mm. The rainfall should be well distributed during flowering and pegging stages. The groundnut cannot withstand long and severe drought. 40. Or water stagnation. During ripening period, it requires about a month of warm and dry weather. Most suitable soils for groundnut production are well-drained, light-textured, loose sandy loam or sandy clay loam with good drainage. Soils should have reasonable high calcium, pH 5.5. The 7.0. And a moderate organic matter. Cropping systems groundnut is grown in rotation with wheat, lentil, chickpea, pea, barley, etc. It is grown as a mixed crop with pearl millet, maize, sorghum, castor and cotton. The most common cropping systems are, groundnut wheat, barley, chickpea, field pea, lentil. Varieties Some promising varieties recommended for different states are ICGS 76, Tirupati 2, Girnar 1, ICGS 37, ALR 3, ICGS 11, HNG 10, Punjab Mumpali 1, Mukta, Chitra, Jyoti, minus 1 rupees, M335, MH4, BG2, TG1, and TMV6. Seed rate and sowing method A seed rate of 80 to 100 kg per hectare is enough for bunch type and 60 to 80 kg per hectare for spreading type groundnut cultivars. In bunch types, the row to row distance is kept 30 to 40 cm and in spreading types 45 minus 60 cm. Plant to plant distance would be 15 and 20 minus 22.5 cm for bunch and spreading types, respectively. Sowing can be done through tractor mounted groundnut planter. The depth of sowing should be 5 cm. One plowing with soil turning plow followed by two harrowings would be sufficient to achieve a good surface tilt up to 12 minus 18 cm depth. In India, groundnut is grown over four seasons. So the rain-fed crop with the onset of monsoon in the last week of June to first week of July. In irrigated conditions, sow in last week of June. In Rabi, groundnut is sown during November-December. Summer groundnut is sown during mid-February. For seed purposes, pods should be shelled by hand one week before sowing. Hand shelling ensures little damage to seeds. 
Treat the selected kernels with tirim or kaptan or sericin at 5 grams per kilogram kernels to check seed and soil borne diseases. Nutrient requirement groundnut, being legume, needs more phosphorus, and being an oil seed requires more sulfur. Seed should be inoculated with efficient strains of rhizobium culture. Well decomposed FYM or compost at 5 to 10 t per hectare should be applied about 15 to 20 days before sowing. Apply 15 kg N, 50 kg P, 2O, 5 and 25 kg K, 2O per hectare at the time of sowing. Use of gypsum at 100 to 150 kg per hectare during field preparation can add to the yield. Calcium 2 has pronounced effect on proper development of pods and kernels. Water management being a rainy season crop, groundnut does not require irrigation. The field should be well drained. Flowering and pegging are the most critical stages for irrigation. 41. Basic agriculture. Weed management 2 weedings 20 and 45 das are recommended. Pre-emergence application of pendimethalin at 1 kg A, I, per hectare in 800, 1000 L water per hectare along with 2 intercultures at 30 and 45 das have been recommended in irrigated conditions. Disease management Ticca disease or leaf spot, unsell organization, the spots on leaves are circular to irregular and are surrounded by a yellow halo. The spots on the upper surface look like reddish brown to black, whereas on lower surface these spots are smooth and light brown in color. Spray the crop 2 to 3 times with Ditani M45 or Litox 50 at 1, 5 minus 2.0. Kilogram per hectare at 10 to 15 days interval starting from the first appearance of spot. Pest management white grub, the young grubs are white and translucent. Fully grown larvae are larger than a thumb. The larvae feed on soil organic matter for a few weeks and then they eat roots. They also damage pods. The grubs cut and eat the plant roots, and consequently the plants will and dies. White grub is a menace in the light soils, which can be controlled effectively by treating seed with chlorpyrifos 28 at 15 ml per kilogram seed. Harvesting, threshing and yield harvesting of groundnut should be done at blackening of inner shell and development of testicular. Harvest the crop at 80% pod maturity. After harvesting, the pods are dried in sun to reduce moisture content to 20-25% to for threshing. After threshing, kernels are dried to reduce the moisture content to 8-10%. to Under normal conditions, groundnut yields about 15-25 to Q pods per hectare with shelling percentage of 68-69. to Sunflower. Sunflower, Helianthus annuus L, also known as Surajmukhi, is an important oilseed crop of India. It is a rich source of high-quality edible oil, 40-43%, and also suitable for edible refined oil and vanaspati because of high degree of polyunsaturated fatty acids, pleasant odor and nutritional value. Its oil has anti-cholesterol properties and contains vitamins A, B, D and E. During 2012-13, sunflower was grown on 0.73 million hectares in India with a production of 0.54 mt with an average yield of 739 kg per hectare. Sunflower holds great promises because of its short duration, photo and sensitiveness and wide adaptability. Climatic and soil requirements The crop requires a cool climate during germination and seedling growth. It requires warm weather from the seedling stage up to flowering stage and warm and sunny days during flowering to maturity. Sunflower can be grown successfully in any season with Kharif, Ravi and spring throughout India. It takes about 80 to 90 days in Kharif, 105 to 130 days in Ravi and 100 to 110 days in spring season. 42. A sunflower field. Sunflower can be grown on a wide range of soils and tolerates a moderate pH range and some salinity. It thrives best on deep loam soils having good drainage and irrigation facilities. Cropping system Sunflower is grown in rotation with several crops. Some of the important crop rotations are maize sunflower, maize potato sunflower, Paddy sunflower, maize potato sunflower, arhat agati, sunflower, sunflower safflower, maize toria sunflower, cotton sunflower, maize toria sugarcane ritun sunflower, basmati rice sunflower, etc. Varieties, hybrids a good cultivar should be high yielding and exhibit stable performance across a range of environments with uniform growth behavior. Some of promising HYVs, hybrids of sunflower are as under. Varieties Colorado 5, TAS 82, DRSF 113, DRSF 108, TNA Yusuf 7, Go SUF 15 hybrids KBSH 41, KBSH 42, NDSH 1, RSFH 1, APSH 11, Suryamukhi, BSH 1, MSFH 1, MSFH 8, MSFH 17, LSH 1, LSH 3, PSFH 67. Seed rate and sowing method Seed rate of 8 to 10 kg per hectare is sufficient to ensure good crop stand. Sunflower should be sown 60 cm apart in lines with a plant to plant spacing of 20 cm. The seed should be sown at 3 minus 4 cm depth for better stand. The seed should be treated with kaptan or sericin at 3 grams per kilogram seed. Sowing can be done by corn planter in the furrows. After 10 to 12 days of germination, extra seedlings should be uprooted to provide a space of 20 cm between plants in rows. Sunflower requires a well pulverized and weed free land with adequate moisture supply. The optimum time of sowing of sunflower in North India for 43. Basic agriculture Kharif, Rabi and Z crops is the first fortnight of July, second fortnight of October, and the first fortnight of March, respectively. Nutrient management sunflower is an exhaustive crop and responds well to NPK. A dose of 60 to 80 kg N, 60 kg P. 2 O, 5 and 40 kg K. 2 O per hectare has been found optimum for sunflower. 2 third N and whole P and K is applied as basal dose. Remaining N should be top dressed at the time of second irrigation, flowering stage. Water management usually, no irrigation is needed for Kharif crop. Pre sowing irrigation is necessary for Rabi and Z crops to get uniform germination and better stand. Rabi crop may be irrigated thrice after 40, 75, and 110 das coinciding to 4 to 5 leaf stage, flowering and grain filling stages, respectively. Weed management weed free conditions till 60 das result in better yield performance. When the plant attains a knee high stage, earthing up should be done along the rows. Use of cement at 4 kg per hectare as pre emergence in 800, 1000 L water per hectare has been found effective in controlling weeds in sunflower. Disease management stem rot, the pathogens attack basal part of the stem, including the head with white cottony growth. Treat the seed with thirim at 2 grams per kilogram seed. Pest management cutworms. The insect may be serious during March April in fields where sunflower follows potato. Caterpillars cut the seedlings at the ground level. Apply chlorpyrifos at 5 L per hectare mixed in 10 kg fine soil and broadcasted uniformly before sowing in the field after last plowing but before planting. Harvesting, threshing and yield the sunflower crop is ready when back of the head turns yellowish brown and the moisture in seed is 20%. The harvested heads should be dried well in sun and then threshed manually or using threshers. Further, sun drying of the seed is desirable before storage or oil. A good crop of sunflower yields about 2 grains per hectare. B E R S E M. Bursim, Trifolium alexandrinum L, is a most important winter forage legume in India, commonly cultivated as winter annual in the tropical and subtropical regions. It provides nutritious, succulent and palatable forage for milch animals. Bursim forage contains about 20% crude protein with high digestibility, up to 65%, and palatability. 44. A view of Bursim field. 
Climatic and soil requirements Bursim is adapted to cool and moderately cold climate. Such conditions prevail during winter and spring seasons in North India, which is considered as favorable and productive zone for this crop. It can be grown successfully in areas which receive annual rainfall of 150 to 250 cm or even lower but the irrigation must be assured. Bursim can be grown on all types of soils except very light sandy soils. Well-drained clay to clay loam soils rich in humus, calcium and phosphorus are suitable for Bursim. Varieties Some of the promising cultivars of fodder Bursim are Pusa Giant, Mescavi, Bursim Ludhiana 1, Jawahar Bursim 1, Borden, BL10, BL22, UPB10, Bundel Bursim 2, Bundel Bursim 3, BL180, Hisar Bursim 1 and JB5. Seed rate and sowing method The optimum seed rate is 25 kg per hectare, which may be increased up to 35 kg in early or late sown conditions. For yield compensation in first cutting, 1.5 kg mustard should be sown along with Bursim. Being a legume, Bursim enriches the soil with biological nitrogen fixation. Therefore, Bursim seed should be inoculated with rhizobium trifoli. The seeds being very small, Bursim requires a fine seed bed. After the arrest of rains, sowing of Bursim can be done from last week of September to first week of December in northwest to eastern and central India. Nutrient management top dressing of 10 kg n per hectare is done after each cut in addition to 30 kg n per hectare basal dose to encourage good regeneration, quick growth and high yield. In general, the crop responds significantly up to 80 to 90 kg p. 2 o. 5 per hectare. The potassium requirement of Bursim has been found to be 30 to 40 kg k. 2 o per hectare in low potassium soils. 45. Basic agriculture. Water management Bursim requires huge quantities of water for producing high succulent biomass. Normally, the crop should be irrigated after each cutting. About 12 to 15 irrigations will be needed during the entire crop season. Weed management The major associated weed of Bursim is chicory, Chicorium intibus. Chicory infestation can be minimized by seed cleaning in 10% solution of common salt, besides deep summer plowing. Cutting management and forage yield The first cutting should be taken at 50 to 55 days after sowing of crop. The subsequent cuttings should be taken at 25 to 30 days interval. The number of cuts depends upon rate of growth and temperature during the life cycle of the crop. The crop is capable of producing 100 to 120 t per hectare of green forage and 15 to 20 tons per hectare dry fodder under improved agronomic management practices and favorable weather conditions. Cotton. Cotton, Gossipium SPP, considered as white gold, is one of the most important commercial crops in India. It is a major fiber crop, but its seeds are used as source of oil. Cotton seed oil is a cooking oil extracted from the cotton seeds. Gossipium hesutum and Gossipium herbaceum are grown for cotton fiber. The genus Gossipium belongs to Malvaceae family and has 52 species in which four are commercially grown worldwide with. Gossipium arborium, G herbaceum, G hesutum and G berberdens. In India, G hesutum and G arborium are grown in all the major cotton growing states. India has the world's largest acreage of 11.99 meters hard with production of 6 mt and average yield of 512 kg per hectare. A view of cotton field. 46. Climatic and soil requirements Cotton is a warm season loving shrub, adapted to a wide range of climate. A frostless season of 180 to 240 days is required for successful cotton production. The cotton picking period from mid-September to November must have bright sunny days to ensure a good quality of the produce. Abundant sunshine during the period of bowl maturity and harvesting is essential to obtain a good quality produce. It is raised mainly as a rain-fed crop in the black cotton and medium soils and as an irrigated crop in the alluvial soils. Proper drainage of excess water during rains is essential. Soils with a pH greater than 9.0 and less than 6.5 and cocoa. Tree content greater than 10% are not suitable for cotton cultivation. Cropping systems Cotton fallow, cotton beet, barley, cotton sunflower. Cotton senji, basim, oats, cotton sunflower, paddy beet, cotton rare. Varieties Cotton varieties recommended for different zones are as under. Zone G Arborium G Herbaceum G Hesutum G Barbadens. North Zone Lohit, Shamali, RG1, LD230, HD11. Digvijay. Gandhanagar Agati, Pusa 31, Pusa 8 to 3, H1117. Dash. Central Zone Sanjay, G22, Ak4, AKA1 F46, B797, Digvijay, CNH36 Lakshmi, Badnavar 1, Nimbakar 1, Devi Raj Suvin. South Zone Nadiam, Shri Shalam, Mahanandi. Jayadhar, Raichu 51, Ajanta Lakshmi, Mysore Vijay, Hampi, Krishna, Supriya. Subin, Sajata, TNB1. Hybrids The currently cultivated hybrids include H6, H8, H10 in Gujarat, DCH32, DHB105 and DHH11 in Karnataka, Savita, TCHB213, Surya and Shuti in Tamil Nadu, LAHH4 and JKHY1 and JKHY2 in Madhya Pradesh. Seed rate and sowing method The seed rate varies with species, growing zone and irrigation availability. The general seed rate for different species, CL is as under. Varieties, hybrids. Seed rate, kilogram, acre. American cotton BT hybrids. 0.750. Non-BT hybrid, LHH144. 1.5. 47. Basic Agriculture. Varieties, LH2108, LH2076 and F 1861 3.5. Desi Cotton Hybrid. 1.25. Varieties. 3.0. Time of sowing is 1st April to the 15th of May. Sowing during this period ensures better yield and escapes the attack of insect pests and diseases. Sowing should be done in morning and evening hours. Sow in line 67.5. CM apart with a cotton sowing drill. The plants within rows be kept 45 to 60 CM apart by thinning. However for hybrids, both BT and non-BT, the plant to plant distance should be kept at 75 cm. It may be done after 1st irrigation or heavy shower. For Desi Cotton Hybrid, the plant to plant spacing should be kept at 60 cm. A fine seed bed is essential for securing a good plant stand. Weed management A deep summer plowing is desirable once in three years to kill perennial weeds, pests and disease propagules hibernating in the soil. For this, hoeing should be done two or three times. The first hoeing should be done before first irrigation. For chemical weed control, apply pendimethalin at 1.0 kg A, I, per hectare is pre-emergent spray. Nutrient management apply 75 kg N per hectare, 30 kg P. 2 o. 5 per hectare in HYVs and 150 kg N per hectare, 60 kg P. 2 o. 5 per hectare in BT and non-BT hybrids. Apply whole P and K as basal dose while half N is applied at thinning and the remaining half N at flowering. Apply 20 kg muriate of potash in soils medium in available potassium and 25 kg zinc sulfate heptahydrate, 21% per hectare to cotton on light soils. Water management cotton requires 4 to 6 irrigations, depending upon the seasonal rainfall. The first irrigation should be given 4 to 6 weeks after sowing and the subsequent ones at interval of 2 or 3 weeks. Sowing of cotton on ridges and irrigation in furrows save considerable amount of water.
In cotton, four critical stages of irrigation have been identified with commencement of sympodial branching, 6070 das, flowering, 90100 das, bowl formation, 125 das, and bowl bursting, 140 das. Drain out the stagnant water, if such a situation arises. Disease management root rot, the loss in yield occurs due to reduction in sudden death of plants. Due to this disease, healthy plants may wilt within 24 hours with leaves drooping without showing any discoloration. Soil should be drenched with 0.2% carbendazine. Fusarium wilt, in young as well as old plants the initial symptoms are stunning followed by yellowing, wilting and dropping off most of the leaves. Soak 4 kg seed in 8L water containing 8 grams of baviston for 6 to 8 HR and 2 to 3 HR in case of delinted cotton. 48. Pest Management Pink Bollworm, it is a notorious pest of cotton in all cotton growing areas. BT cotton provides effective protection against all cotton bollworms. Harvesting threshing and yield cotton is harvested in 3 to 4 pickings by hand as the bowls mature. By adopting improved technology, it is possible to harvest about 1.5-2 t per hectare of seed cotton kapas. However, much higher yields may be obtained from hybrid cottons. Cotton lint production is 33% of kapas production, by cotton to seed production is 66% of kapas production. Point to seeds crushed is 14 to 18% and cake to seeds crushed is 82 to 86%. Jute. Jute Cochorus SPP is a fiber crop belonging to family Spamaniaceae with two major species, white jute Cochorus capsularis and tosser jute Cochorus oleatorius. White jute fiber is superior quality fiber used to make hessian organic cloth. Jute is one of the most affordable natural fibers. The fibers are off white to brown and 1 to 4 m long. Jute production in India is concentrated mostly in Assam, Odisha, Bihar, and West Bengal. A woman harvesting jute. Climate and soil requirements Jute is the crop of hot and humid climate. It requires high temperature varying from 24 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius and heavy rainfall of 120 to 150 centimeters with 80 to 90 percent relative humidity during the period of its growth. Alluvial sandy loam, clay loamy soils are best suited for jute production. Capsularis jute can grow even in standing water especially towards the latter part of its growth. 49. Basic agriculture. Oletorious jute will not thrive in standing water. The latter is more drought resistant and is therefore grown on lighter soils. Varieties Capsularis varieties, JRC 212, JRC 321, JRC 7447. Oletorious varieties, JRO 524, JRO 878, JRO 7835. Seed rate and sowing method Capsularis jute requires 7 to 10 kg seed per hectare and sown at a spacing of 30 times 5 cm. Oletorious jute requires 5 to 7 kg seed per hectare and sown at a spacing of 25 times 5 cm. It is sown in February month. Fine tilt is required since the seeds are very small. Crop duration is 120 to 140 das. Nutrient management well decomposed FYM at 5 t per hectare should be applied during last plowing. Besides, 20 kg, ha each of N, P, 2O, 5 and K, 2O is applied basally. Beds and channels are formed depending on water resources. Apply 10 kg N per hectare at 20 to 25 days after first weeding and then again on 35 to 40 days after second weeding is stop dressing. During periods of drought and fertilizer shortage, spray 8 kg of urea is 2% urea solution on jute foliage on 40 to 45 as well as 70, 75 das. Water management jute crop requires 500 mm of water. First irrigation is given fourth day after sowing. Afterwards, irrigation can be given at 15 days interval. Weed management hand weeding twice on 20 to 25 and 35, 4 o, das. Pendimethalin at 1 kg A, I, per hectare can be sprayed as pre-emergence herbicide. Post-emergence application of phenixaprop TP ethyl at 75 grams ha1 or quizilofop ethyl at 50 grams ha1 at 21 das, when the grass weeds are 3 to 4 leaf stage, is effective against grassy weeds. Harvesting threshing and yield jute crop can be harvested from 100 to 110 das but can be extended from 1 to 135 das depending on local cropping systems. Jute plants are left in the field for 3 to 4 days for leaf shedding. Then thick and thin plants are sorted out and bundled in convenient size. Green plant weight yield is 45 to 50 t per hectare. Fiber yield is 2.0 minus 2.5 t per hectare. Retting retting is the process of extracting fiber from the long-lasting life stem. The available retting processes are, mechanical retting, hammering, chemical retting, boiling and applying chemicals, steam, vapor, dew retting, and water or microbial retting. Among them, the water or microbial retting is essentially old but the most popular process in extracting fine vast fibers. 50. Sugarcane. Sugarcane belongs to genus Suchurum, which has five important species viz. Suchurum officinarum, S. sinens, S. barberi, S. robustum, and S. spontaneum. The first three species are the cultivated species and the last two are wild ones. Highly prized cane is S. officinarum because of high sucrose content. Sugarcane is a tall perennial plant growing erect even up to 5 to 6 m and produces multiple stems. Sugarcane is AC4 plant having high efficiency in storing solar energy and most efficient converter of solar energy to sucrose. Brazil is major sugarcane producing country followed by India. A view of sugarcane. Sugarcane harvesting in progress. Climatic and soil requirement in the tropical region, sugarcane gets more or less ideal climatic conditions for its growth. The different critical stages are germination, tilling, early growth, active growth and elongation. Optimum temperature for sprouting, germination, of stem cuttings is 32 degrees to 38 degrees Celsius. For ripening, however, relatively low temperatures in the range of 12 degrees to 14 degrees Celsius are desirable. Sugar recovery is highest when the weather is dry with low humidity, bright sunshine hours, cooler nights with wide diurnal variations and very little rainfall during ripening period. A well-drained, deep, loamy soil with ample available water holding capacity is considered ideal for sugarcane cultivation. The optimum soil pH is about 6.5. But sugarcane can tolerate considerable degree of soil acidity and alkalinity. Hence, it is found growing in soils with pH in the range of 5 to 8.5. Seed rate and sowing method Seed rate in sugarcane varies from region to region. In North India, seed rate generally varies from 35,000 3 budded sets per hectare while in South it ranges between 25,000 to 40,000 3 budded sets per hectare. The row spacing in subtropical part ranges from 60 to 120 centimeters, whereas it is 90 to 150 cm in tropical regions. 51. Basic agriculture. Sugarcane take generally one year to mature in subtropical states called Exali, however, in some tropical states, it matures in 18 months called Archali. In India, planting seasons of sugarcane in subtropical regions are September to October, autumn, and February to March, spring. Whereas in tropical regions, it is June to August, Archali, and January to February and October to November, Exali. Sugarcane can be planted by improved method of planting like deep furrow, trench methods, ring pit method, and paired row method instead of furrow system.
Cultivars some of the promising sugarcane cultivars are Cos 687, Cos 8436, Cos 767, BO 106, BO 108, BO 90, Cos 7508, Cos 7704, Cos 1108, COJ 83, Colorado 89003, Cos 29, Cos 997, Cos 527, Cos 775, Cos 419, Cos 775, Cos 8021, Cos 8011, Cos 671, Cos 8208, Cos 93076. Nutrient management The NPK recommendation for sugarcane crop varies from region to region. The recommendation of N is from 70 to 400 kg per hectare, P. 2O. 5 is 27 to 74 kg per hectare and K. 2O is 25 to 141 kg per hectare. Apply FYM or compost at 10 to 15 T per hectare. Recommended dose of biofertilizer for sugarcane crop is 10 to 12 kg per hectare. Acetobacter, Azotobacter, Asospirillum and PSB are the major biofertilizers which are being used in sugarcane crop. Water management in tropical area, irrigations are to be given once in 7 days during germination phase, once in 10 days during tilling phase, again in 7 days during grand growth phase and once in 15 days during maturity phase, adjusting it to the rainfall pattern of the area. About 30 to 40 irrigations are needed. Whereas in subtropics, about 7 to 10 irrigations are being given to the sugarcane crop. Sugarcane is a high water requirement crop. About 250 tons of water is needed to produce 1 ton of sugarcane. Methods like alternate furrow irrigation, drip irrigation and trash mulching could be of use to economize irrigation water during water scarcity periods. Weed management in pure crop of sugarcane spray at raising 2 kg or oxyfluorofen 750 ml per hectare mixed in 500 L water as pre-emergence herbicide on third day of planting. Pre-emergence application of Tiobin carb at 1.25 kg A, I, per hectare under intercropping system in sugarcane with soybean, black or groundnut gives effective weed control. Plant protection sugarcane is liable to be attacked by a number of insect pests and diseases. Due to diversity in agroecological conditions, the importance of insect pests and diseases varies and therefore, management strategy should be adopted accordingly. Top borer and stock borer are found predominantly in subtropical areas whereas early shoot borer and among diseases rust and eye spot are prevalent in tropical region. 52. Harvesting and yield harvesting and collection of cane should either be mechanical or manual. In subtropical India, it has been shown that spring harvested crop would result in a better return than that obtained by harvesting in the autumn. Sugarcane crop is harvested after attending maturity. Generally, it starts from the month of October and continues till the month of May in subtropical states, whereas in tropical states, it starts from the month of December and continues till the month of May. Cane tonnage at harvest with best management practices can vary between 120 and 150 t per hectare, which depends on the length of the total growing period and whether it is a main or return crop. The sugar recovery in sugarcane varies from state to state. Average sugar recovery in the country is 10.25%. Coffee. Coffee, coffee SPP, is the second important beverage, ranking second among traded commodities. Its dried beans are roasted, ground and brewed to make a stimulating and refreshing beverage. Nearly 80% of the world coffee is produced from coffee arabica, 20% from coffee camiflora and 1% from coffee liberica. There are approximately 250,000 coffee growers in India, 98% of them are small growers. India grows both arabica, around one-third of production, and robusta, around two-thirds of production, varieties of coffee. The total planted area of coffee covers around 380,000 hectares mainly in the traditional coffee growing states of Karnataka, 58%, Kerala, 22%, and Tamil Nadu, 8%. Full bearing a tree of coffee. Coffee beans. Climatic and soil requirements The coffee arabica is grown at an elevation of 1,1500 m altitude and requires high annual rainfall of 1600-2500 mm than coffee robusta, which can be grown at lower elevations, 500-1000 m altitude. Soil should be deep, friable, and rich in organic matter with a pH of 6.0-6.5. In April, pits of 45 times 45 times 45 cm may be dug at an appropriate spacing, 2-3 m. In June, the pits are 53. Basic agriculture covered with top soil and staked. In poor soils, 250 grams of FYM or compost per pit may be added before filling. Cultivars The four main botanical cultivars of India's coffee include Kent, S795, Kaveri and Selection 9. Propagation and planting in coffee. Generally the propagation is done through seeds and of late in robusta. The clonal propagation is also done. Disease-free and vigorous seedlings are selected for planting. Rooted plants, aged 16-18 months, with and without ball are planted during June and bag plants are generally planted during September-October. The seedlings are provided with cross stakes to prevent wind damage and mulch properly. Planting shade trees Dadap, Erythrina lithosperma, is generally used as a lower canopy shade plant. Stakes of 2 meters length are planted for every two plants of coffee. Silver oak and Dadap are planted during June when the southwest monsoon commences. Training and pruning the coffee plant is trained either on single stem or multiple stem system. Under South Indian conditions, periodical handling and pruning are essential. Centering and desiccering are to be carried out for about 5 to 6 years after planting. Usually coffee, both Arabica and Robusta, is trained on single stem. When the plants reach a desired height of 75 cm for Arabica and 105 minus 120 cm for Robusta, they are topped. Water management wherever water is available, overhead irrigation by sprinkler system is adopted to a greater advantage during November-January to keep the soil moisture level and in February-April for ensuring blossom as well as backing, if necessary. Fruit ripening hastening of fruit ripening in coffee could be achieved by spraying etafen, etrel, on mature berries when 10% natural ripening is observed. The following concentrations are standardized for Arabica and Robusta plants. Arabica, 100 to 120 milliliters per 200 liters of water per 400 plants. Robusta, 40 to 54 milliliters per 200 liters of water per 267 plants. Harvesting to harvesting systems are used most widely in coffee growing. Picking, coffee picking is a totally manual process in which the ripe cherries are selected and picked one by one, requiring pickers to rotate through the crop several times. This yields a more uniform high quality crop. 54. Stripping, coffee stripping is a process that may be manual or mechanized in which all the fruit is removed in one go when it is of average ripeness. It often requires a further check to eliminate impurities and underripe or already fermented cherries. Disease management. Disease. Symptoms. Control measures. Dieback dieback refers to death of younger tertiary branches starting from apex progressing downwards. 1. Removal of dead and whippy wood. 2. Providing judicious shade. 3. Conservation of soil moisture with thick mulch. 4. Fall air application of nutrients. 5. Correcting the soil. Acidity by application of lime. Leaf rust this disease cause economic loss particularly in Arabica coffee. Lower leaves have small pale yellowish spots. Spray with 0.5% Bordeaux mixture or 0.03% oxycarboxin 20 EC, 3 to 4 times a year. Pest management. Pest. 
Symptoms. Control measures. Coffee berry border the female beetle bores into the berries through the navel region and makes tunnels in the hard bean and lays eggs. A typical pinhole at the tip of the berries indicates the presence of the pest, and it damages young as well as ripe berries. Timely and complete harvest, burying the infested berries and maintaining optimum shade and good drainage can control the pest. Spraying quinalfos 0.05% along with wetting agent 120 to 150 days after flowering can control the pest. White stem border the adults have two flight periods as they emerge from the pupae during April-May and in September to December, January. As the beetles are active and females lay eggs in the crevice on the main stem of coffee. Swabbing the main stem and the thick primaries with carbaryl 50 WP at 4 kg in 200 L water once or twice in April, May or October to December. 55. Basic Agriculture. E. E. Camellia sinensis, belongs to family Camelliaceae or TCI, is the most popular and the cheapest beverage consumed by two-thirds of the world population. Majority of the tea-producing countries are located in the continent of Asia where China, India, Sri Lanka are the major producers. In India, it is mainly grown in Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Karnataka. Some of tea is produced in Uttarakhand and in Kangra Valley and Mandi district of Himachal Pradesh. Harvesting of tea in progress. Climatic and soil requirements tea bushes a tropical and subtropical plant and thrives well in hot and humid climate. There is a very close relation between climate, the yield and the quality of tea. The ideal temperature for its growth is 20 degrees minus 30 degrees Celsius and temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius and below 10 degrees Celsius are harmful for the bush. It requires 150 to 300 cm annual rainfall, which should be well distributed throughout the year. Tea is a shade-loving plant and develops more vigorously when planted along with shady trees. Tea bush grows well in well-drained, deep, friable loams. However, virgin forest soils rich in humus and iron content are considered to be the best soils for tea plantations. Relatively large proportion of phosphorus and potash in the soil gives special flavor to tea as is the case in Darjeeling. The soil should be acidic, around pH 5.0, having good drainage facility. Varieties. Clones, UPASI2, UPASI8, UPASI9, UPASI17, BSS1, BSS2. 56. Propagation and planting the seed viability extends up to 6 months. Before sowing, seeds are put in water and only the sinkers will be used and floaters rejected. Seeds germinate in 4-6 to six weeks and the cracked seeds are transplanted in polythene sleeves. The plants will be ready for planting in the main field in 9 months. In the case of new planting, in order to avoid the incidence of root diseases, after felling the trees, remove the root system to the extent possible. Clear the jungle growth but do not burn, the ash being alkaline will increase the pH. Pits of size 30 times 45 cm are dug one. Keep the top and bottom soil separately. In clay soil and drought prone areas, deeper pits, 60 cm, or trench planting will be advantageous. In southwest monsoon areas, June July and in northeast monsoon areas, the September October are ideal months for planting. Nutrient management apply 100 grams of powdered aluminium sulfate per pit and thoroughly mix with soil. Select seedlings of 12 months old. After planting the seedling, compact the soil surrounding the plant and apply mulch at 25 THA1. The four year old and above plants are applied with 300, 350 kg NPK per hectare, respectively in six splits. Special operations in tea garden. Training of young tea plants. Proper training of young tea plants is essential to encourage good spread of the bushes, proper development of frames and high density of plucking points. Centering. Cut the leader stem of the plants with cicatia to arrest the apical dominance and to induce the secondary branches. Cut as low as possible leaving 8 to 10 mature leaves below the cut. Ensure proper recovery. Centering should be done 4 to 6 months after planting during humid weather when there is adequate moisture in the soil. Tipping. First plucking of the periodic shoot is done after centering, pruning. Two-tier tipping ensures proper spread. First tipping at 35 cm height will induce the tertiaries. Second tipping at 50 cm height will increase the density of plucking points. Tipping should be done at green, semi-hardwood branches. Tipping should be done in shoots having 3 to 4 leaves and a bud. Plucking. Mother leaf, step up plucking is practiced during lean seasons. Level plucking is done during high cropping months. This is essential for better frame development. 57. Basic agriculture. Shade management. The best permanent shade tree for tea plantation in South India is silver oak, Grevillea robusta. Tea requires only sparse shade. So retain optimum stand of shade based on the growth of the tree, altitude of the garden and aspect of the field. South and west slopes require more shade. Always thin out shade prior to pruning. Pollarding cutting the main stem with the objective of developing lateral branches is called pollarding. Commence pollarding when the trees attain a girth of around 50 cm at elbow level. Pollarding depends on altitude, 8 meters height for high altitude, 9 meters for low elevation. Leave one branch in each direction and 3 to 4 tiers of branches below the pollarding height. Annual lopping cutting the erect growing branches on the laterals is called lopping, which should be done before the onset of monsoons and lop only the erect branches and retain the laterals. Plucking. Harvest 2 to 3 leaves and a bud. Pluck the mother leaf during January March. Pluck the new level during rest of the month. Pluck at 7 to 10 days interval during high cropping months. Pluck at 12 to 15 days interval during low cropping months. Do not pluck below the level. Leave immature shoots. Shear harvest during rush periods. Cut lanes in older fields. Harvesting in tea. Freshly harvested tea leaves. 58. Important disease and their management. Disease. Symptoms. Control measures. Black root disease. The common symptoms are wilting. Chlorosis. Drying without defoliation and death of bush. Remove surface mulches around 10 meters. Trench soil with mancozave 30 grams, 10 L water. Follow phytosanitary measures. Collar canker. The main symptoms are chlorosis. Cessation of growth. Profuse flowering and canker on stem. Remove affected portion by pruning the healthy wood and apply copper fungicide to cut ends. List of blight. The fungus affects only tender leaves and stems. Stem infection leads to goose neck shape, dieback and snapping at the point of infection. Spray of copper oxychloride 350 grams plus plantomycin 70 grams per hectare at 3 to 4 days interval can control the disease. Important pest and their management. Pests. Symptoms. Control measures. White cockchafer grubs, Holotrichia sp. The creamy white grub eats away the roots. Main symptoms are ring barking of stem, chlorosis and defoliation. The pest is a serious problem in areas where undecomposed FYM is used. Heat treatment of soil is effective. Trench 0.05% clopyrifos or conalfos. Root mealybug, Desmycoccus sp. The pest is a problem in nursery. It sucks sap from the callusing region, mother leaf petiole and axillary buds. This arrests root development, leads to mother leaf fall and finally death of plant. It can be controlled by spraying in soil. Trenching with clopyrifos or conalfos 0.05%. Exercises. Activate. 